Hello, good morning everybody. Thank you for joining me uh, with the Sewing Quarter. It's me, Becky Blees. Um, some of you might have seen me, I was on last month, but I'm back for another shift today. So thank you very much for having me. Uh, very excited. I'm working with Hannah again. I've not worked with Hannah for uh, quite a few years. So uh, I've aged quite a bit since I last saw Hannah. Uh, so yeah, it's been a lovely, we've had a lovely morning already. So, and we've got a great lineup for you today. So thank you for joining me. So should we have a look at the menu then? Let's see what we've got coming up today. Um, here we go. So we've got eight o'clock. We've got versatile cotton canvases. Um, these are perfect if you want to make any sort of do any home furnishings or make any bags, that sort of thing. So that's going to be coming up at 8 a.m. There, great selection there. Then at 9 a.m. we've got Angie Atwood uh, making farmhouse quilts. Uh, making a farmhouse quilt is absolutely beautiful. Wait till you see this. Um, I'll be able to show you that in a second actually. Then at 10 a.m. we've got a designer fabric hour. Some absolutely beautiful, beautiful uh, new collection of fabrics we've got in this hour. Something for everything in that hour. Some really soft ones as well coming up at 10 a.m. Then at 11 a.m. Uh, we've got free motion machine sewing. That's with Angie again as well. Um, I'm really looking forward to... Um, doing that hour it's something to sort of inspire to a little bit of an introduction in how to actually use it uh, obviously I've never done anything like that before so already this morning I've been having a quick chat with Angie and I feel like I've learned so much yeah I can't wait there's a water demonstration coming up and that's all I'm going to say on that but I'm absolutely fascinated by it and um, as well please make me feel welcome because I'm scared all stood here on my own uh, so if you want to send any messages in feel free to um, get in touch with me I'll show you the website as well uh, this is how you get in touch with us um, here you go so you go on you go on to watch now watch today's show and then oh, there you go Hannah's going crazy with the mouse and there we go that's what oh she done it it's back again. She's managed to wait the little mouse off. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That was the internet. So there you go. You can watch the show. Oh, there I am. Hi. Uh, so you scroll down there. You do have to log in. And then you can just send your message there where it says, message the studio. Uh, and you send a short message in there because it gets cut off apparently. And then all the products from today's show are also going to be on there as well. So you can have a nice look down there. If you do have a longer message or if you want to send a photograph in, uh, which would be great, then you can email in the studio. So email studio at sewingquarter.com. So if you want to send any messages in there. Is this little iPad on? I'm so like a bit of a technophobe. Like I said last, no, it's, oh, it's, it's not on. Right, oh, this is the quilt here. Look at this. Um, this is coming up at nine o'clock today. It's a Lynn Goldsworthing design as well. Uh, beautiful. Look at that foundation paper piece that. I can't wait to do that. That's absolutely beautiful. So that's going to be coming up at nine o'clock with Angie. So don't miss that. Now, we're going to start then with the fabrics, aren't we? With the canvases that we've got. You, so these are all 100% cotton. They're a little bit heavier weight, so it means it's ideal for sort of the home furnishings. It's great for if you want to make any bags, that sort of thing. Um, still, I say 100% cotton with these as well. Slightly wider as well, these ones are. So you've got 150 width with these. Ooh, which one should we start with? Shall I be really boring and go for the one that everyone thinks I'm going to go for, the one at the end? Should we go for the navy, nice navy blue? So I'm okay to open these, aren't I? Because I, I know poor Chris has been folding them for ages, so... We can open them up, can't we? We can have a waft. So have a look. I'm a nightmare. <laughs> so this one here, this is half a metre. So this is what you're getting. On camera, it looks very similar to our Makawa solids. It's, uh, it's hard for us to tell you about the weight, though, with this. Uh, but as we have mentioned, they are sort of a heavy because you can't feel them. It'd be funny if you could put your hand through the screen and have a feel. Um, so have a look at this one. So this is your cotton canvas fabric. This one's in the navy. There you go. Look at that. It's a nice, uh, and that. So we sell obviously by the half metre implement. So uh, for half a metre, it's £3.65. Lovely. So if you want the navy, if you got two units, you're getting obviously a metre with that one. And remember as well, it's only one P and P, isn't it? It's two nine to five, which is great. So that was your navy one. Let's go to the turquoise one now. How nice and bright is this one? 
Absolutely beautiful. Oh, think of summer. Think of those summer beach bags that you've got with this one. Um, make a nice little bean bag cover actually for a child, child's room. Beautiful. Playroom, that sort of thing. Absolutely lovely. Look at that. Reminds me of the sea, you know, a nice Caribbean sea. <gasps> oh, what would do to go there, hey, Hannah? <laughs> Oh, so that one again, that one's your fabric in turquoise. What's great with these as well, doing the more sort of block separate ones is you can mix and match. If there's a couple that you want to add into your stash, that sort of thing, it's perfect for that. We see a lot of these as well um, in bundles for our bad, uh, bad bag making bungle, bungle, bundles. Uh, so it's great. So if you've got a pattern already, you can um, get as much as you need. So let's, this is teal now, this one. There you go. That one's nice, that goes with a lot of outfits, doesn't it? Nice, nice, nice. So again, you're getting your half a metre with this one. And of course, it is your cotton canvas as well. It's pretty, that. Because of how popular these are as well, we always re -add, we reorder these and we always keep trying to add to the collections of colours as well. So we've got a nice selection. Am I okay just stacking these here? I don't want to make a mess. <coughs> it's my desk. Oh, I like that. <laughs> My workroom, I like it. Becky's workroom. Oh, this one's a nice. What's nice? Uh, this is a duck egg one. Really nice, bright. Oh, isn't it? I think because it's so dull outside at the moment and grim, isn't it? Apart from yesterday when it was sunny up in Manchester, which is a rarity. Um, everything's just like fresh and bright and popping, isn't it? This is really like spring, isn't it? That lovely like Easter duck egg colour. Uh, Easter's early this year, isn't it? It is end of March. I don't know how I know that because I'm useless at knowing any sorts of dates, but for some reason, I'm big on spring. Yeah, I count down every year to spring. It's been a long winter. Very wet, hasn't it? That's why, yeah, hey, like, um, Hannah's saying, that's why everyone wants to start using the bright colours and things as well. Right, so we're going to go on to, we've got the, we've got two creams here now. This is the white one. What I'll do is I'll show you them both next to each other as well. So you can see, so I'll show you this on its own and then I'll pop them both together so you can have a look at them. Here we go, in fact, I'll open this one wide. So this one is your white that we've got here. Ooh, maybe you're covering chairs for a wedding. In fact, what'll look nice is, I'll pop that down a second, just so you can see the brightness of it. If I put something like the tur oh, dropping the navy, the turquoise next to it, you can sort of really see the sort of popping, can't you? The color. See, again, you can mix and match with the product, um, products. Oh, Hannah's thinking ocean. Oh, yes. Oh, look at that. Can you imagine that nice white sand <laughs> and then the turquoise? Oh, beautiful contrast. So that's the white. What I will do, though, is let me just show you the cream next to it because there is a big, big difference. Um, so we'll put, I'll show you those two just so you can see because people sometimes want to know the different uh, brightness with the fabrics. So there we go. Ecru, Ecru. Magnum ice cream colour, I like that one. That's what Hannah's saying. There used to be a foundation called Ecru. Yes. Yes. I'll just take the white across there, the white's across the bottom there. So that one's your white, and then this is your Ecru. There we go. Lovely. Again, that works well with the, uh, oh, I'll tell you what does look nice. Oh, Christine's emailed him. Is it nice? <laughs> oh, you want them all, do you, Christine? Heavenly fabrics. Oh, thank you for tuning in, Christine. Hope you're well. Uh, they are beautiful, aren't they? I think what's nice with some of them, though, is you can actually add them together into your stash. And if you did want a collection of fabrics, it's a, it's a great little treat for you to add in. This is the Ikru one just against the navy. I think these two colours work beautiful together as well. Have a look at that. Oh. <gasps> Those are the colours I had for my wedding. Yeah. Nautical it was, quite nautical. <laughs> there we go. This is very interesting. <laughs> no, don't, Hannah. Uh, right, again, we've got the black now. Can't wait to demo this one with another one. This one. We always bundle this one in bag making. I think this one's perfect, isn't it, for if you are making bags. Um, I always say you can't go wrong with black dresses and black bags because they go with absolutely everything. However, 
And let me just show you something because I'm dying to mix. This is what I would do. Da, da, da. Of course, of course. Look at those two together, that beautiful fuchsia print. Oh, oh nice. There you go, fuchsia's just along the bottom there. Look at that. You could put a nice, in a black bag with a nice fuchsia pink trim along it. <gasps> Maybe just using them for bag lining. So you could have a black bag and then you could have the fuchsia inside or you could do a reversible bag. There we go, I like my bags. Summer's coming. <laughs> I know the pink sneaked out already. The last time I was on, I had a pink top and I nearly wore it again, but I thought, well, better not wear the same top twice. <laughs> Right, here we go. Have a look at this one now. I'll open this one wide. So once again, they are the canvas uh, ones. So these are, this is your brown. So like we've said, these are perfect, obviously, say, for home furnishings. Brown almost like undersells a little bit, doesn't it? It doesn't, the name brown doesn't sound glamorous. I mean, I'll tell you what would look nice though. I'll just mix this up a bit, like a um, bit of a, like a latte effect going on here of your browns and your creams because it is really popular I remember a few years ago it was all the rage you have and it still is I think now but a lot of people used to have the coffee creams in their lounges and things to make some nice cushions with those <sighs> nice I think it's just the name brown isn't it it's a uh, brown yeah I like it's very uh, I like, it's nice brown <laughs> now <laughs> We've got this one here as well. So these are all like, almost like your coffees, aren't they? Let's have a look at this one. Let me just show you how wide this fabric is. <gasps> Having a good fun time wafting away. So you're getting a lot here, aren't you? A lot, value, a lot of value for money here. And this is the beige one. So again, do you know what? The beige, the brown and the creams would go lovely. This is quite neutral for your home, isn't it? So again, this will um, work with a lot of colours. But what I'll do is let me... Get into the home interior designing now. Lots of you are putting them into your baskets. Don't forget, um, make sure you click out. I think a lot of you have used these, Hannah said to me, that a lot of you have used them in bundles and a lot of you are sort of topping up again. So again, you know, like with those three colours here, these are handy. If you're into sort of the neutral, the beiges, the browns, if you look at the way those three go together. So we've got the beige, which is the main one up there, which is this one. Ecru, which is there along the bottom, and the other one there is your brown. Why do we always say brown? No one can just say brown. It's brown. So there you go. So again, those three beautiful fabrics there just work lovely together. Always good to have in your stash, aren't they, to have a collection. <gasps> we go, they're getting messier and messier. My pile is growing. I can't get this um, email's not, this, the, the slide pad's not on. Oh, someone will have a play. I'm like from about the 19, wherever, 1900s. I just got used to how to use a mobile phone. Someone rang up yesterday asking if I wanted to upgrade my phone because it had something to do with a gigabyte thing or something on it. I was just like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm happy with, I, I just, I'm like, my phone works. I use the internet. How many times a day do you go on the internet? I was like, I don't know. It's like, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm happy with my phone bill. It's taken me years to get it this low. <laughs> right. <laughs> Have a look at the grey. I love grey. My bedroom's grey at the moment. Grey, silvers, yes. With, the my lounge is grey as well, actually, with a bit of a plum. Do you have a grey sofa? I have a grey sofa. Yeah. Oh, she has, uh, Hannah has grey borders. Skirting boards, they are. She calls them her borders. But they are, aren't they? My house is almost like black and white. <laughs> it's literally just, well, everything's grey. Grey and with a pop of plum now and again. Right, so we've got the lighter grey here. This is more like a silvery, isn't it? Do you know, these are the light. <laughs> like it says, it's a, quite simply a light grey. This would actually work well in my lounge and you could actually make a selection again of cushions if I show you the light and the, like the, light and the dark grey together. And that slightly heavier weight means they're going to be a bit more lasting, a bit more durable, especially when you've got a child that likes to make a mess. <laughs> it's amazing. She's out. My child's only 11 months. It's amazing the mess she makes already. My word. Yeah, it'll only get worse. Why did I move from a leather sofa to a material sofa? I don't know. I love this colour here. Have a look at this one. And again, these are... 
work lovely with the silvers and the grey. This would be perfect. Nice spring bag. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. That's lovely purple, isn't it? Oh, do you know what? A nice little bag for a wedding. What's good is you can make your own bag. Hannah's made a good point. She said she can't do clutches. They're a nightmare, but that's the bonus of people who make their own bags. You can customise it yourself, so you can put a nice little strap on it for when you're dancing, having a boogie. Do you put the bag? Uh, Hannah's one of those. She puts her bag down, and then she can't find it. There we go. They look nice together. Lots of you putting this one into your basket as well. Remember, you can check out um, your basket multiple units. They'll come all joined up, and you only pay one P&P as well. There you go. Look at those three. See, look at those three. Aren't they beautiful? So if you are like me, if I've got, like I've got, as I say, a silver grey lounge, you've got your light grey in the middle, and that one's going across the bottom, and then you've got your purple there. Look at that. It's quite a light purple, isn't it? Soft purple, I would say. But that'd look nice as well if you, if you are like me and you want to add a pop of colour into your, your front room, your lounge, your bedroom. By the end of the show, you'll know every colour in every room I've got at home, right? <laughs> colour carpet. Oh, no, it's pink. You know, it's <laughs> silver so far. Now, Hannah, I'm, you know, I'm surprised actually. Hannah's got pink in her room, so she's not very girly. Um, I love this colour. It's like baby pink, isn't it? This would be great for your curtains, Hannah. Have you thought about getting pink curtains? Oh, it's beautiful. Again, with something like the baby pink, it, that would go with a lot of things as well. That would look lovely. And I'm going to get the silver back, uh, the grey back out again. That's gone straight in the basket. How nice would that be as well for a bag for, again, wed weddings, uh, christenings, even if you're making something for a little girl? There you go. Look at those two together. When you've got a fabric, I think, that's perfect for interiors, you start then building, you know, <laughs> everything around the house then becomes, you use it for. Do you know, these two colours are what I want to put, do for my daughter's bedroom when I finally move her out of a nursery into her big girl's room. I'm so excited she's going to be forced into be liking pink and grey. <laughs> Isn't that cute? You want me to bring her in, Hannah says, really? <gasps> she's a nightmare. Don't let Hannah know. <laughs> oh, well, I'll bring her in. I'll bring little Belle in and she can sit with you. <laughs> she was up at 5.20 this morning. Luckily, I was out of the house way before then, so it's not my job today. Look at this fuchsia pink. <gasps> oh, my word, that is beautiful. Look at that. This is my, I'm going to have to say, this is my favourite, hands down. I'd love a top out of this. Nice, you could do where you say curtains. Uh, imagine um, you could do chair covers, even, you know, the bottom of your chairs. My friend Helen liked pink. She, this would, uh, I could imagine her having this in a, a house. So that would look nice. I've shown you before, loads of that's gone in the basket. So again, if you wanted, you could do it bold with the black, black and pink. That's nice. Look at that. With that, let's try and get the white out, the crisp white. I've worn this for a wedding, actually. In fact, I wore navy, white, and fuchsia. It did work, trust me. Let me, uh... there you go. You see those two together? I had a navy jumpsuit. I just had a baby. I had a wedding. I had nothing to wear. I was mortified, so I wore a navy cat suit. Well, cat Cat's like, how old am I? Navy jumpsuit. <laughs> and then I had a white blazer, white shoes. They were classy white shoes. And then I had a bright, no, it wasn't a white blazer. It was, um, it was a fuchsia blazer. And then I had white shoes, white handbag. Yes, there it does, it works. Yes, except the similar colors was what the, I think it was the mother of the bride had on as well. So I was mortified that I'd got the same colors as the mother of the bride. You know, you're like, oh no. Awful. And then, but you don't know, do you? I wish they'd put, when you get married, I wish people had put maybe like a colour thing of saying, do not wear, or this is the sort of colours that family or something will be wearing. So it's awful. I know a girl that went to a, um, 
a wedding and she had the same bridesmaids dresses on. So she was like, I feel like I've done it because I've not been picked. I thought, oh no, it's awful. Cringe. <laughs> right, look at this one. This is beautiful, nice red. Nice bright red there. Beautiful, look at that. That'd make a nice beach bag, wouldn't it? Isn't that pretty? I'll try, what can I show? I'm trying to, why I'm showing you them with different colours um, is just because sometimes I know I've seen when people have rang in or messaged in before and asked, is it like a coral tone? Is it a bright red? So that's why I'm trying to almost show you different. I'm so sorry, Chris, I've made a right mess for you. There you go. So you can see there it is a bright red there with the red and white. See again, that would look nice as uh, I've had my pile taken away. <laughs> See again, that'd be nice. Again, if you're wearing a white outfit, you could get just adding a pop of um, a pop of red in with a handbag. Yeah. I'm very much nowadays more for having one outfit and then customising it with accessories. Makes sense, doesn't it? Especially as well, I think, if you can make your own bags. I want to learn, so I've been looking I'm in, into the bags. I want to make, that's my challenge. I want to make a bag while I'm here. <coughs> yes, bag making, I want to specialise in. I have made a soft toy once, a whale. When I used to work on the ships, for some reason, I ended up running a soft sewing club. I couldn't sew. I had to, I don't know why people asked me, and I put it on. I ran the choir. I can't sing. And then I ran a, ran a soft sewing club. I was like, why not? I don't know why we had, we're in the middle of the Atlantic and we had loads of toys to make. I don't know where they came from, <laughs> what happened, but I learned and I had a lady help me stuff it. The boat, what boat was it, you're asking? It was P&O, Oriana. Yeah. It was a world cruise. We had like three months to kill, like kill time sort of thing. So we had to think of different activities. Susan's messaged in, has she? Oh, hello, Susan. No, I can't read the iPad. It's got a, a it's, do I just turn it on? Chris is like Superman for me. He's folding my fabrics. He's turning my things on. Susan. Oh yeah, Susan says when her daughter got married, she walked into the church behind the bridal party and she saw her sister-in-law in the same dress. Oh no! Oh, Susan. She had a different jacket on and different accessories on. Oh, they joked about it afterwards, but I bet you, yeah, she was mortified. Oh no. That's a good thing about, if I'd say again about making your own bags, making your own accessories, because the chances that somebody else has made the same bag as you is pretty slim, isn't it? Give them as gifts as well, bags that you've made. It's unique that someone else isn't, you're not gonna get the same. Right, let me just show you this orange one, bright orange. Thank you for your message, Susan. There we go. See on the screen, that looks a bit corally, but it is a bright, it is bright orange. Again, what I'll do is I'll show you the, uh, the white next to it. That is a bright. I've got my fabrics taken away like I've been naughty. <laughs> there you go, so you can see the orange there. I hope that helps anyway. It is holiday that as well, nice stripes. Ooh. I need to look at going on holiday this year, but what do you do with a, a one year? Well, it should be one. But somebody, where do you go? Don't really go to Dubai, do you? To lounge on a beach. What lens in the sun? Yeah, we'll be over doing lots of activity. Oh, mustardy yellow, this, isn't it? It's like a mustard yellow. Oh, this is lovely. Have a look at this. Hannah has this in her house a lot as well. You've got a selection of, haven't you? You've got this pink, grey, uh, silver borders, as you call them, or skirting boards. But you, Joe, I always think it'd be nice to have each room in the house complete different colours. But my like, house sort of like spills out into different ones. So there you go, that's your yellow. It's nice. Oh yes, I've got some Sandra. Sandra from Yorkshire. Morning Becky, love the canvas. I'm laid here with a bad back, but loving the show. I've learned so much. Oh Sandra, I hope your back gets better. 
Oh, bless you. It's annoying that when you have a bad back. Uh, I'm glad you've, uh, you're enjoying it as well. Thank you for your message. The beautiful colours, aren't they? Lovely, lovely. I think as well, because um, <coughs> from what I've been told as well, because um, obviously I've not been here long, um, Hannah was saying we've never bought a, such a big collection like this all at once. So it really is, it's like we've gone through pretty much all the colours of the rainbow. So you've got a real variation of choice. Because I know not every colour is for everybody. But I think what's nice as well is you can add in colour. You know, you can think, oh, I'll just pop that one into my stash. Because again, they're great prices that you're getting them for. And also if your bag making stash or your craft uh, stash, you might not want 100, um, you know, might not want the Macaws for, but you've got your, you can have, have your heavier weight with these ones as well. And again, it's nice to mix and match because you could be making this ba a bag in this colour, for example, but then you might think, oh, I just want to add a nice lining to it or add a finishing emblem or something. Here we go. So this is the pale green, like a mint green. <gasps> mint. I like this colour. I want to paint my shed this colour. Oh, do you know, that's a really good point. Hannah's just said about uh, blazers in the summer. She's, um, that'd be a great, I was just thinking that actually a great way to make a blazer out of these because they are just that little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, aren't they? <gasps> what colour would you make a blazer out of, Hannah? Look at that. Just have to go outrageous. Fuchsia? You're not a fuchsia, are you? See, I'm the fuchsia. I'd be a fuchsia. Yes. That's not our age. It's like, oh, you can't wear, have a black blazer, Hannah. That's not our Or you could do a black blazer and then put, add on a bit of yellow. Yeah. Nice round the, trimming round the cuffs. Cuffs. <laughs> Oh, this just is like summer meadow field, meadow, meadow field. It is like just a field of grass, isn't it? Beautiful, oh, fresh cut grass. I can't wait to smell that, can you? <laughs> Look at that there. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that, beautiful. These are actually going out. A lot of these are going well. So just, um, Hannah's just said to me, just to remind people just to check out your baskets. I don't want to be like, oh, get them checked out quick. But uh, I wouldn't want you to miss out for them. It's stuff that we can always reorder in and we can get in. But I just think it's a nice chance for you to, you know, add to your collection. We've got such a wide variation of them. Now, they're all our different colours that you've just seen there. We've also got the book here, The Ultimate Sewing Bible. I've been having a good look at this. We've talked about a lot about interiors um, and we've got a whole section in this book that I have marked here, which I will uh, find. I was having a good read through this this morning. There you go. Oh, let me, uh, should we do it on the overhead? That means nothing to you at home, but it means that they can show you from up there. Oh, it's got all about basically measuring how to do, I mean, you could, one thing I'd say is to get your chairs and things um, reupholstered, you can save a fortune doing them yourself, can't you? Just have a flick through. So there's all different, working with different patterns, different fabrics, different choices, little different designs that you can do, embellishments. Oh, you could do your curtains, how to measure up for them, get your tie backs. This is one of the only books I've been told that actually only does, it goes into all that sort of detail. That's why this is always popular, this book. It tells you about your French doors. It's a really handy book, this, to have. Oh, blinds. Oh, do you know, I didn't even mention blinds once doing those, um, which is great. They'd be great, especially if you've, say, got, you know, in your kitchen or something, you just think, I'd like to just add a little pop of colour or just something a little bit different. You can do that. Repainting, doing a whole room can be really expensive and a pain as well, whereas if it's, you know, you enjoy, you can recover it or you can make a blind or something look at that it shows you there with the chairs sofas that would save your fortune redoing a sofa especially because i've got a child <laughs> there you go got tables there you go it goes into sort of preparing and cutting it really goes in and something i can say is because i, I don't pretend to know what i'm doing so as I'm learning, I've got a lot to learn. But what I noticed with this book, and that's why we marked it here, it was really, really clear for me when I was having a look through. Because I, you know, sometimes you can get overload of information where it, what I liked with it is it's all sort of step by step, really explaining it and going into detail. 
Yeah. And again, it goes work a big bit on the curtains there as well. So you've got your book there, 14.99. That's really, you're getting so much information in there. Really good section there on home furnishings. That's just one section of the book there. Goes into pillows and cushions, which everybody goes crazy for now, the cushions, don't they? Scatter cushions. <coughs> You can pay though, <laughs> it is ridiculous. If you go into certain shops, you can pay through the roof for a cushion, can't you? Right, I'll pop that back there. So there we go, that's your Bible, Ultimate Sewing Bible. Right, I've got a couple of uh, popular colours that I'm just gonna re-go through. So is it the navy? Look at that, just right with the fuchsia there. The navy, I have to say, is incredibly popular. Oh. I won't go opening them again, Chris, don't worry. <laughs> Here we go, so you've got your navy. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. A third of the stock for the navy, a third of the stock of what we had has gone. It's a real versatile colour, the navy. Do you know what, navy is almost like another version of the black, isn't it? It goes with that, I'm getting the fuchsia in. Looks lovely with the green. Looks lovely. Sorry, I'm whizzing through. <laughs> Got the few. I'm just playing. But it just shows, because everyone always thinks black, and sometimes people think, oh, black's too heavy. Whereas you can use navy as your base, and again, you can pretty much team it up. All about the base. I wouldn't mess probably with another blue in the navy. Orange is also incredibly popular. There we go. Oh, the orange and navy looks nice. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got such a tickle today in my throat. Don't think I've got allergy or anything. I think it's just from talking too much. <coughs> shouting yesterday, actually. I was shouting I had a naughty little girl yesterday. <laughs> Decided to have a meltdown in public. <laughs> well, I thought babies start at the terrible twos, but she started at the... 11 months old stage, arching her back, won't sit in a pram, won't sit, well, push chair, won't sit in anything, and I'm, hi chair, what's wrong with you? You like food. Right, should we go and have a little wander over here? Is that, or were you saying to me about my baby exploring? <laughs> right, <coughs> let's have a little wander over here. Now, talking about bag making, this is uh, one of our favorite books with the uh, bag bundle that you're getting here. So many ideas that these are some of the bags that you can make out of it. And obviously we've just shown you all those beautiful colors. Do you know, I have to say with this one, imagine this like in, a, well again, I'm saying it, the nice fuchsia. You can maybe have navy straps with it. It's entirely, it's, that's the thing with your, what's great with the books. You can personalize them to you. Because like I was saying, everybody has their colors that they like, everyone has their favorites. So you can, you know, get the ideas out of the book. Let's have a look in the book. The, I have to say, since being here, the bags are amazing. Right, now let's have a little look through. This book, let's have a look at this. We've got all sorts and we've got the tricks. See, Hannah, have you made a bag out of one of these? But I'm sure, have you never done bag making? Is there one you've got? There's something that reminds me of you with a bag in this book. I don't know why I was watching a show and you were talking about one. Gertrude? There we go. Again, it's step by step breaks down. Because I was saying to Hannah before, actually, it's one thing I never thought I'd be able to do is to make, an, make a bag. And the way it's broken down here, it just makes it seem so simple. So obviously, there's people watching who it's like they're a pro, they can whip a bag up really quick. But then I'm, we're also very aware there's people who are learning each day, wanting to know, try different things. So it's really handy um, just, you know, to get your ideas, patterns. Oh, just see. Oh, it's the one on the table. I was going to say one's just caught my eye. Look at that. So again, it's just showing you all different styles. And like we said before, you know, it's a great way to make, make a gift. I don't think you can ever have too many bags, can you? Is there a Hannah bag? Is, there a, is it called Hannah? Uh, that'd be where I'd probably, little round Hannah bag. Anna Len, La, Lena. Oh, have you, Sandra? You've got the bag bible and a couple of canvases. Have you? Oh, well done. Oh, you'll love them. What colour um, canvases did you get, Sandra? Let me know. You get... Oh, 
patterns in this book as well, tucked away at the back. <coughs> really handy, I love it. You get so much in there. You want me to pull this bag out, Hannah? Is this one? Look at this. This one, uh, the instructions are in the back of the book for this bag, the weekend bag. You could fit loads in here. I'm going to say I could pretty, I travel quite heavy, but I could actually say I could fit my weekend attire in here. Those are little pockets and things. Look at that inside. And again, you can use the fabrics that you've, your choice. You can have as many um, fabrics as you like on it, as many colours. Let's go back to the book and have another flick through. Oh, look at this one. So again, what it's doing at the front, which is really good, it's got skills. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. It's got um, skills at the front. As I say, you've got your patterns at the back. Then you've got some great, oh, you've got even little um, brooches. Because you could personalise it, couldn't you, if you are giving it as a gift? I mean, it's already personal because you're making it, but it's just beautiful. There was um, a designer range, wasn't there, that put badges on um, brooches on bags? Yeah, because you could take them off. But again, that's, you could, again, have make one bag, make different brooches, and you could uh, then change the look up. That one's nice. Ooh, Laurie. Is that Laurie? Laurie? My spell reading is awful. Laurie. Well, I want to find Hannah's bag. Is there a Becky bag? No, there won't be. There might be. Oh, Shirley, that's a nice one. Is there not a Rebecca bag? Oh, well. Clearly, my name won't be. Oh, there's a Hannah bag. There we go. That's cute. <coughs> oh, you fit all your little knickknacks in there, Hannah. Could use that when you go into a festival. Mm, just presumed you like festivals. <laughs> I'm going for a potter. Oh, I like that one. Nice little backpack, isn't it? Nice, nice, nice. Oh, oh, we've got some pictures from people. Let's have a look at the pictures. Pop that back. This is Elizabeth. <coughs> oh, wow, I can see that on the screen. Have a look at this one. Elizabeth, she loves the sewing quarter. Hi, Elizabeth. And she can recommend the quality of the fabric. She bought the beige canvas. Uh, she bought the beige canvas a little while ago and she made this bag for her stepdaughter's birthday. That is amazing. Wow. She's bought, uh, got PU from us, uh, the PU leather. And she's going to make a project with them as well. Oh, send them in. Let us know how you get on with that. Thank you for your picture. That's great what you can make. It's amazing. Oh, my word, Lorraine. Look at this one. Lorraine apparently makes loads of bags. Oh, thank you, Lorraine. Saying welcome, Becky. Thank you. That's lovely to uh, have a message off you, Lorraine. Thank you. And what a lovely bag. That's beautiful. Right, we're going to do the little metal accessories now. Because obviously if you're making your bag, um, these are the little bits that are... Uh, should I put it on the floor? Uh, oh, actually I'll need that again because it's got studs on the bottom. Let's just pop that there for now. Um, all the little accessories here that you're getting are all what help finish off your bag. So it's almost like you think, you know, if you want the, the little studs for the bottom of your bag, it's all those little extra bits that you might not always think of until you've finished it and gone, ah, I could just do with that. Just give it that professional finish to it as well. What would you like me to start with? Should we do the, the silver, silver bag bottoms, bag studs? There we go. See, I work like that. If you'd said a certain name, I'd be like, oh, what's that word? She said, silver, silver. Oh, I got that straight away, silver, silver. We're like, silver, silver. Okay, so you've got four in there, two ninety nine. And like we said as well, with the postage and packaging, it's amazing. It's 2 95 per day. So if you've got some fabrics, you can just tag on a few little bits as well. It's the difference between homemade and handmade, isn't it? That's like the step up. So we've got the silver, silver. Then which ones are we doing now? The br bronze mat or silver mat? Silver mat. <laughs> yes, here we go. 
They call it antique silver. <laughs> I'm just playing say what you see. <laughs> so again, you've got two different choices. So these are the antique silver, and I'll just put them next, just in case you're sagging, what earth is she on about? So you've got the silver silver, and then you've got more of the antique, aka matte finish. Then each person's different, and this is the thing, it's down totally down to you, everything's personal. And whatever colours you're matching it with. So there we go. And then the last one that we've got is these ones here. <laughs> oh. Which are, uh, what should we go? I would say antique brass. Oh, Hannah does talk, Posh. Antique brass. See, I'd say you've got antique brass. Where do I live? Manchester. Are you going up north? <laughs> oh, good luck. <laughs> she makes it like it's a long way. Are you going at the weekend? Where are, what are you doing in Manchester? Oh, you're going to Sheffield. Um, what are you going to do in Sheffield? Explore. Oh, right. Okay. Right, now we've got um, an antique brass clip here. Again, these are great. Again, it just finishes off the bag nicely. I've got a bag in my trolley that's got it. Here we go. Look at that. Oh, do you know, it's very Gucci-esque this, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. And I'll just show you that in the packet. So that's what you get. So it is, it's all these little bits like we're saying that, you know, you make your bag and then you think, oh, I'll just finish it off with this. It's their piece de la resistance. I can never say that right. So. And there you go. What's great, it shows you different ways of using it. So you can use it higher up on the strap. You can use it across the front. Or you can even do it on a purse. Make your own purse. Matching purse and bag. And then you can do the belt as well if you want. There was a time when I always used to insist on having a matching purse and handbag. That was in the days when I used to live at home, didn't have to pay bills and just bought clothes with my wage. Gosh, what a nice treat that was it's so long ago. Now, I think I have a, I keep, I'm one of those people now that has money in a pocket. I've turned into one of those people now. Right, I've got magnetic, oh, the long snap. Or just the little ones, ah, here we go. We've only got these ones only today in brass, the magnetic um, snap there. So that again stops you things from falling out. We should, there should be on the website a selection of different ones, different colours, but we've just got the uh, brass today. There we go. And again, it just shows you on the back how it works, which is, again, and I know I keep saying things like this, but this is something that I find really interesting is the fact that everything is it, very simply explained. So for people who are sat going, oh, I really don't think I'd be able to. I think I could actually do this because um, it is sort of very step by step. Tells you what you're doing. Really nice and easy. Adjustable buckles. Are we starting with silver, silver? There we go. Adjustable buckles. There you go. One pound fifty for those. And again, it's great. These are handy just to pop in the stash because it'd be one of those if you are into making bags and things. Um, you know, you can just pop them in. Which one is it? So, uh, antique silver. Antique silver. I'll be saying that now and I see things. Oh, that's an antique silver colour. My bracelet is shiny, shiny. <laughs> Do you know what, though? It says what we knew what it was, didn't we? We knew what it was when you explained it, Hannah. There we go. And then we've got the last one, which is the brass, is it? Brass. There we go, the brass one. So it's all these little bits that you might not be able to get everywhere. Um, if you don't have a haberdashery shop near you, these are all little bits. Or it could be one of those that you'll probably make a bag or make something and you'll think, oh, I've not got one of those adjustable buckles or I've not got the magnetic snaps or something like, it'd be something like that that you just think, oh, I've got one of those in the box. You could actually make a little bag to keep all your little bits in organization and then we've just got the d-rings now there as well these are in brass antique brass 
So you're getting four in there. Do they come in other colours as well, Hannah? Can you get these in other colours as well? I believe you can. There we go. Ah, they might be in different sizes. There we go. Right. There we go. Fabulous. And then we've got shapes now. Shapers. These are fantastic because, again, what these do, you can see this one's not got a shape in the bottom. That's got, like, the flat bottom. Great that for, like, putting your laptop in, your folders, that sort of thing. And I've got a bag that's hanging up. It's got one in the bottom. I'll just run and get it. I'll get the bottom base. So you've got the flat. I don't know if I just stood there holding it. And then we've got this one. This is also from the book. So you can see there you've got the bottom there, the flat base, which I'll show you in a minute. But I just wanted to show you in the bags first of all. So you can see the difference. Fit more in. And it stands as well, doesn't it? Just gives it that little sort of different shape to it. So got them in two different colours. You can, these are the ones you can stitch on, aren't they? You can stitch with these if you don't have a machine. So we have them in white. So these are your Clover Shape and uh, Create Bag and Tote Stabilisers in white. You get two pieces. And again, on the back, it tells you exactly how to use them, what you can do with them. You can use them on the machine. You can stitch through them. So there we go. And then we've got them in the black as well. If you have a look at this. Depends, again, I think what colour fabric you're using, doesn't it? So you can actually stitch them into the bag or you can just cover them and have them just as a base. Do you know, I actually had a bag where you, I used to be able to take mine out because for some reason my bags always get full of crumbs. But I never keep biscuits in them because uh, I hoover my bags out and it'd be easy if you can take it out, give it a quick shake and a hoover. Right, should we go across? I'll take my bag and hang it back up. Hang it back up for Chris, because I feel bad about ruining his fabric display. <laughs> right. Just going to run through a couple of our favourite colours from the fabrics, just because some of these have gone absolutely crazy on. Right, let's have a look. Let's go. Oh, the light grey. Here we go. There we go. Someone's asked if they were to put two into their basket, they get a metre because it's in units. So that's thing. each piece is half a metre. So obviously two units is a metre. Four units is um, two metres and it would come joined up as well. <coughs> there we go. So you've got the light greys there. Have a look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Loads of you are getting that one in your basket. That's really pretty. Green's also really popular as well. Half the stock of green have gone. Is it the bright green? I was about to say which green. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. That is so bright spring. How nice would this look maybe in your kitchen if you wanted to add, um, you know, nice blind. A Roman blind. Orange is popular as well. We all like that. I think it is. Everyone's liking that bright sunshine colour. Another thing I'd say with blinds as well, I've got those awful. They drive me up the wall. Is it the... Um, Plastic, well, I say plastic, the Venetian, the Venetian blinds, those, they are a nightmare to clean. And because I'm a bit of a clean freak, it takes me ages. You have to, the only way to do it, I try so many different ways, the only way to clean is literally dust them off first, then wipe them, then you buff them, and it's like, mm. And when you've got them on French doors, I've got them on every single window, and I thought, you know what, why do I not get material blinds? And that's one good thing with these as well. And the you know, bonus is you can just do it so you could chuck it in the washer. Material doesn't seem to get as dust on them either. I don't, maybe I just live in a dusty house. It's new, so it shouldn't, but there's your orange that you've got there. Fuchsia as well is popular, of course. Let me get the fuchsia out. Oh, aren't they beautiful? See, even just having, you know, like I know they're green and fuchsia, but just having a collection of bright colours together, there's something, isn't there, that just makes it go, makes it pop. There we go. So this is my colour. I like that with that. This one has the, the um, lots of you got this one in the basket, in your basket. Over half of it has already been checked out. So if you do want fuchsia, I'm just giving you a little um, heads up. Make sure you check that out. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. I, mm. 
I want to. I was going to start creating and say, oh, the fuchsia, match it up with the different colours. I love the fuchsia. Oh, don't get me wrong. I mean, the thing is, when I look at when I get the silvers out and the greys and the baby pinks, that works well. So many of them work well together. Right. I'm going to do these ones here. We do. I'll just slide them across. Right. Bag bases. <laughs> Hannah's saying she forgets people don't have really long arms. Well, steps. Right. I've got two round bag bases. Uh, I've got a black round and a chocolate brown round. So let's do the black one first. These are really, really simple and easy to use. And again, they finish off the bag. Um, and they're great as well. If I know people are going to have a bag and they're going to be putting it down on the floor because you can just wipe clean these. And you can just see at the top there, they just slot in, don't they? And you stitch around them. There's instructions on the packet. Again, aren't they just simple? I'm one of those, if there's too many words, too much going on, I'm like, oh. And I just sort of panic over it. I've got, I've got one half done in my trolley, which I'll get out for you. So this is obviously the uh, round one and it's the brown one. Someone's halfway through. You've got half a handle. <laughs> Here we go. So have a look at that. So you can just see there, can't you? Not real leather, 12.50. Nice, nice finish there. Right, I'll just do the brown round one now, which is here. There you go, that's a nice chocolate brown one. Have a look at that. And again, like we've said, the instructions to it are on the back. That's 12.50. Do you know, Hannah's just said a really good point. That Hannah said since she started working here, she didn't know that things like this existed. And that was the same. I think it's amazing. There's all these, you can make, it's like you can make a bag that's almost looks homemade and you can turn it from homemade, can't you, into a handmade exquisite boutique looking bag, you know, and it's just by adding all these little accessories and things on, which is incredible. So that is your brown one. So those are your round ones. Then these are more of your, uh, I'm gonna say rectangular ones. So we've got the black one. Oh, do you know, again with the fuchsia. Let's just slide that in again. Always oh, gotta pop it in, I love it. Summer. I'm so desperate for summer this year. It's been, I don't, I've never been waited this long for summer. And then we've got like the brown, more of a tan one this, isn't it? Have a look at the tan. There you go, the light one. Now I know it's a completely, um, it'd be nice for you navy that, wouldn't it? I know it's a completely different, it's a different shape to it, but I just want to show you the chocolate brown again next to it. Just again, so you can again see the different color difference between the brown and the dark brown. Only because I know people ask about it, that's all. And there you go. So that's your brown base. And there we go. Right, we've got the strap fastening now as well. Ah, snap one, this is great. Oh, I bet we've got a demo of that one. Doesn't matter if we've not. Uh, this is perfect, this is. It just finished off. You know if you're making um, a little clutch bag or, well, any sort of bag, it just sort of snaps it closed for you. And me and Hannah were playing with these earlier. Um, and so you can actually put it in and then it's a bit of a faff, but you can take it out and you can put it in another one. That's what we were doing this morning at quarter past six, was it? They're just really, really handy, aren't they? Really useful. Especially if you want to match your bag to your outfit, you can literally just think, you only need a couple of these then. So we've got that one, that's 8.50. And again, the instructions are on the back, so it just tells you how to use it. All bags for bridesmaids, maybe. There we go. Now, what I would say is please do check out your baskets, um, especially on any of these colours, because they have been really, really popular. And we're just going to have a quick look at the greys again. Someone's asked to see those. So I'll show you the light. They want me to compare the light and the dark. So there you go. Have, that's from Sue. There you go, Sue. So Sue, you can see this is your light grey. And there you go. That's your light grey. And then you can see the darker one underneath it. Just so you can get a difference with the light grey, I'm going to just show you in the light purple as well. Just so you can see... 
and I'll just take the dark grey away. There you go. And I'll tell you what we'll put in. Let me pop the white under so you can see just the... There we go. There you go. Have a look at that one there. I just think I know when you're when I know when I, if I was buying colours, I'd want to people want to know like the sort of colour depth, don't they, and things. So you can just see that's why I always sort of try and show you a couple of colours so you can get an idea. There you go. Just so you know, if you've just joined us, um, on if you watch us on the website, underneath the auction, there's all the different colours, all the different um, fabrics that are on there, so you can. Um, have another little look through there as well. And our shows are repeat as well through throughout the day until about midnight. No, it's tomorrow morning, isn't it? Just before the, the show. The show's on again, uh, repeated. So if there is anything that you want, you can always have a look back. And if there's any previous shows that you've seen, anything, oh, I'd love to know how to make a certain bag or something, they're all on YouTube. So you can have a look back at the shows on there as well. So with these cotton canvases, uh, do remember that they're slightly wider. 100% uh, cotton as well, and they're heavier weight as well. So like we said, they're great for home furnishings, great for your bags, that sort of thing as well. Right. We've got coming up after the break uh, this amazing quilt. I can't wait. So I've never done quilting before, so I'm really excited to have Angie with me. Um, so she's going to be showing you, going through it. We've got a great set that you can get with this as well. So grab yourself a quick cup of tea or coffee, um, and we'll see you. I'm going to have a water. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Bye-bye. Follow us on Pinterest, search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Join Sewing Quarter at the Sewing for Pleasure show this March. From Thursday the 15th to Sunday the 18th, the NEC in Birmingham is transformed into fabric heaven, where you can enjoy sewing, quilting, patchwork and dressmaking with the experts. Find the Sewing Quarter team on stand H06. And with the chance to meet our guest designers, as well as presenters Natasha and me, John, we'll have live demonstrations for you to enjoy, plus special show prices on exciting products. Snap up your tickets and bring a friend for free with our two-for-one ticket code exclusive to Sewing Quarter. Quote the code EV26 at www.sewingshow .co.uk and you can get two for one prices on adults and seniors for one, two and three day tickets. Sewing Quarter is the UK's first TV channel dedicated to sewing and quilting. On air and behind the scenes, our team of top industry experts work hard to bring you tons of exciting projects. Whether you're into dressmaking, bag making, piecing, patchworking or quilting, you'll learn something new every day from our talented guest designers and fabulous presenters. Our online shop is packed with tools, haberdashery essentials and fabulous fabrics, from simple solids to designer gems. And with our 30 day money back guarantee and single daily postage charge, you can shop with confidence. So tune in daily on Freeview 78, Sky Channel 678 and shop online at sewingquarter.com. Hi, I'm Victoria Pete, and here are my top tips. My first tip is when dressmaking is to wash your fabrics. As soon as you get home or as soon as it arrives in the post, stick it in the wash. Wash it as you would do with the finished garment. Get it ready so that when you're ready to sew, you're ready to go. My next tip is posture. When you're sitting at your sewing machine, particularly when you're doing something like quilting, pay attention to how you're sitting in the chair because quite often when you're really concentrating on quilting, you have a tendency to hunch and before you know it, you'll end up with a bad back. So my last tip is to not sew when you're tired. So many times I've sewn when I'm tired and I make mistakes and you find yourself unpicking or wasting fabric. Sew when you're nice, ready and fresh. Welcome back to the Stone Quarter. It's me, Becky Blees, with you this morning, and we've got a great lineup for you today. We've still got, we've got coming up in this hour, we've got a fantastic quilting 
uh, session with Angie. I'm so excited about this. We've got the farmhouse quilt. Uh, we had it hung yesterday on the set and people were asking about it, inquiring about it. So today's the day we're going to show you how you can make that. Look at that. It's a Lynn Goldsworthy design. And you're doing foundation paper pieces. There we go. Look at that close up there. Isn't that nice? <gasps> so it's using two blocks and they interlock to make a pattern. So we're going to be talking through that with Angie. Um, she's full of so much information, Angie. She's helped me already this morning. Uh, fascinating. But the bundle that we have for you today is extra special. <laughs> Loads. Um, it's been put together for us, so it's, we've not done it. It's with all the fabrics that you need. So when it arrives, you will have your backing, you're going to have your binding, you'll have your uh, wadding, you're going to have your instructions, your thread, you're going to have basically all of these fabrics here with it as well, which is absolutely incredible, isn't it? Have a look at all these. So you're going to have all of these patterns absolutely everything in here so you're getting look at all that that is amazing again you've got your step-by-step -step instructions 15 meters of uh, fabric all a mixture in there as well and it's got key brands in there as well across the whole industry so there's say the key brands in there absolutely gorgeous so that's going to be available today this is going to be crazy so when you receive this in the post as well, when it arrives, or if you're buying it as a gift for somebody, it's going to come beautifully packaged, all in a gorgeous box as well. Right, there you go. You can see it there. So you've got the farmhouse quilt. So you're getting everything, including 15 meters of fabric. You've got the, it includes the wadding, it includes the thread that you've got in there as well, the instructions. Some of those are fat quarters as well. And of course you've got the quilt. Right, let's go and have a, should we go and see Angie? I'm going to uh, go through. Shall I take these instructions with me? So I'm going to need help, I think. <laughs> Hi, Angie. Morning. <laughs> How are you? Good, thank Lovely you. Lovely to see you. And you. Um, now, what did you first of all think when you saw this in the post? Um, well, I actually saw the quilt here first, so yeah. I had a bit of an inkling that I was getting it as a project, <gasps> so that was lovely. Um, it's gorgeous, isn't it, because it's um, quite a traditional feel, but yeah. it has a modern twist, yeah. and I think that's, um, it's Lynn Goldsworthy design, um, and I think she's, well, she's a modern quilter, yeah. so she's taken quite a, a traditional quilt style yeah. and uh, put this modern take got, on it. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's really it's lovely. lovely. And you've got such a selection of prints and fabrics yeah. with it as yeah. well, which is just, because when I saw all that, I was like, wow, we're making a quilt. Well, um, I don't, if you can see on the corner of the desk here, um, when I when it arrived to me, yeah. I was just like, wow, oh. you know, this bundle of... So like your dream. Really <laughs> heavy. Um, I was saying how heavy my bag was coming in this morning yeah, and no, I didn't I even that. have the I make, so yeah. I was like, had all this fabric in it. Um, Absolutely fabulous, and uh, like you say about us putting it together, we normally only sell in half metres. Yeah. Um, but because this design uses, I think it's 14 red fat quarters and 18 cream prints. Wow. Yeah. Um, we've actually, ha you know, we've had that made up in fat quarters. Otherwise, if, if we had to sort of halve it and do seven, and you're repeating yeah. the same print, um, so it's just such a gorgeous selection of fabrics, wow. isn't it? It's incredible. So, um, so you're going to show us today. Yeah, how hopefully. To, <laughs> first of all, before we start, yeah. how did you get into quilting? Um, I actually, I was a graphic designer and art director for over 20 years. Oh, really? So I went to oh, art wow. school yeah. and, you know, I've always designed, um, but I've always dabbled with sewing. Yeah. I uh, made all my own bedding and curtains, you know, when I bought my first house and I used to upcycle clothes. Oh, wow. Um, and then sort of after a few years in the advertising industry, decided I wanted, I was always, in, you know, interested in making. Yeah. And uh, so I decided I wanted to make it a, a new career. Very so, uh, ah. But I started in free motion embroidery. So I started We've drawing got that with today. Stitch. I'm really yeah. excited about that. There's, I keep going on about your water demonstration. Yeah. I'm not giving it away. <laughs> that's coming up at 11 o'clock. I'm excited. But so. quilting, no, I, I, it was a bit of a surprise to me to enjoy quilting. So yeah. I started with free motion embroidery. And um, then I loved things that are quilted. Yeah. So I was making these nice uh, art textile art pieces, but I wanted to bring quilting into it because I love the feel of something quilted. So I went to uh, patchwork quilting classes, never expecting to get hooked on no. piecing. So I love really? piecing. Really? Oh, wow, well. yeah. So be warned out there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we're going um, to be doing yeah. this. So I think it's going to be 
It's a great um, project, actually, because it's not no. You haven't only got lovely prints to to play with, and, yeah. and you know it's not just two fabrics or whatever. They're they're gorgeous, but it's two different blocks. But then right. when they put together, you can see it makes up this lovely secondary oh, design can, yeah, going on. Yeah. So we've got the farmhouse block, and the star block. So it's two oh, different beautiful. blocks. Ah, very um, traditional, isn't it? Yeah, especially the um, the star block, obviously. I've seen a few house kind of yeah. um, blocks, but this is really sweet. I like the houses on there. I think yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, they're really lovely with the little chimneys. So it's basically, yeah, um, all I'm going to show you today is how to do these two right. basic blocks, um, the star block and the um, house block, farmhouse block. Yeah. Now, the star block is mostly half square triangles. Oh, right, okay. Um, so I was initially, um, get the lovely instructions, yeah. as you say, and it's got all the cutting instructions. It's really step by step. It it's great. Um, I was surprised to read that even the half square triangles were foundation pieced because normally we don't do that. We just yeah. put two pieces of fabric together and stitch and we don't use um, paper foundation. So I decided to, um, although you can do it that way if you like, you could, you could measure the template. This is the template. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, you've got the full cutting instructions and everything there that tell you what to cut from each, for each star block or he, each farmhouse yeah. block. <clears throat> um, so you can transfer your template to either stitch and tear yeah. or just uh, put it through the photocopy if you've got a copier. Oh, the yeah. cheaper the paper, the better. I'd run out of my really cheap, thin paper. Oh, had you? Oh, no. <laughs> so um, it's actually better the thinner the paper, actually, because it's good to be able to see through it. Right, because that's something you want to be able to see yeah, through it. Yeah, and to tear it away yeah. as well. But anyway, we've got quite a, a medium weight, but that's yeah. fine. It was still, still doable. Um, so it was intriguing for me to do it with um, the paper. I think the nice thing about doing it on foundation when you're working with a bias, yeah, with the half square triangle, right. is it's holding everything nice and secure. Okay, yeah, because things can get distorted. So that's quite nice. So we'll start with that one first. What it's going to, um, as I said, it tells you to cut um, a, a largest. I think this is about seven and a half inches or something like that. Two squares, one out of a print and one out of the cream. Okay. The red uh, print. Aren't they lovely? <laughs> They're gorgeous, aren't they? Yeah, I thought I'd do the Paisley one today. Um, and my um, first sort of um, tip is that I always um, trace some of the the template, oh, the reverse right. side. Oh, okay. Oh, that's handy to know. Because we're actually working on this side. Yeah. Uh, we stitch on this side, but the right. fabric always goes on this side. And I just find when you're doing... Um, foundation piecing you're sort of trying to hold it up to the light yeah. to see where to position each piece uh, which is a bit annoying if you just draw some of the lines on there you've actually got extended lines there that oh, you can yeah. actually see so I can easily see there because I've extended the lines out I can see that I'm putting oh, my can, square yeah. I don't have to hold it up at all. No, that, I can that's see a good tip, I, yeah, isn't I can it? center it there and so these two pieces go right sides together Oh, nice. And this is going to be sort of a quick and easy way of making lots of eight half square triangles, right, okay. basically. And then you want some um, either flat headed pins or pins without a head. So that's why I'm using these um, standard pins rather than the big quilting pins I normally use have got big, big, yeah, they've got big heads on um, them, glass they? heads yeah. on them. So we're just going to then pin, pop a couple of pins place. through and just try and grab the, the paper as well. And just to secure those, doesn't have to be too secure. No. Okay. And then we can flip it over, yeah. Ah. And then the instructions tell you, you can see you've got different colours on here. So we're going to stitch along the blue lines, if the camera can see that. That's the blue lines. So they're basically um, on a cross, okay. each side of the centre <coughs> cross. Right. So I'm going to do that now. When you're doing foundation piecing, um, it's advisable to lower the stitch length on your machine. Okay, right. Smaller. So about 1.5. 1, 1. Why 5. is that? So that's going to, um, when we have to tear away the paper, yeah. you don't, if you've got quite large stitches, it can pull the stitches. Okay, oh, right. So it's like it giving, and it's also then puncturing the paper yeah. to make it easy to tear. It's ah, perforating right. it, so yeah. it'll make it um, far easier to, to um, tear away. So I've already done that. That's all ready to go. So I'm just going to stitch over the top now of these blue lines. Because sure, this might sound really difficult, because you're stitching through paper, is that okay with the needle? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
you know, if you're stitching through paper and things, it may blunt the needle. Right. Uh, but you should change your needle for every project. There anyway. You go. <laughs> Let's change your needle. Yeah. <laughs> just to let you know, a third of the stock apparently is already in baskets already. Just to let people at home oh, know, wow. so a third of it's already in baskets. I didn't realise people. It was on air yesterday. I didn't realise it was hung yesterday, and people were. Yeah, they were. Apparently, Hannah said loads it. of people were messaging in about oh. it. Uh, but it's the whole kit. Just to remind you, you're getting the backing, the binding, um, the wadding, the thread, the instructions. You're getting everything, um, all different fabrics, fat quarters, everything you're getting at that price on the screen, which is amazing. So you're just Ooh. stitching through yeah, the blue line. Just gone lines. off a little bit. <laughs> it's fascinating. I'm loving Linda's, and already I'm amazed. You know, the, how to even make the triangles is yeah. great. Yeah, because normally you'd start with sort of a square this large. Yeah. And just stitch either side of the center until you'd be making two at a time um, so this is a way to make make them a little bit quicker yeah um, but as I say I, I'd never done it uh, foundation piece half square triangles before so um, it's really nice actually some you know we've all got our own methods of doing things yeah. so I've done those two so I'm just going to do the ah, other side uh, now you've learned skills you were saying before from Lynn's instructions yeah there's a yeah. little there's a little mm. I mean I've got uh, as you keep as I was just going to say that, sometimes you can know how to do something, but sometimes it's nice to follow someone else's instructions yeah. because you can pick up little tips. Um, I like that about teaching, even um, to be in a room full of other ladies that stitch. Yeah. You know, as much as I'm giving them tuition, you can pick up tips from other people as well, yeah. you know, other ways of doing things. Um, oh. So that's quite nice to always pick up tips. Um, I've got little tips of my own with foundation piecing, but I did learn something, uh, a little tip from Lynn's oh. foundation piecing tips. Um, if you've never done foundation piecing before, the uh, farmhouse block is a little bit more sort of like traditional right. foundation piecing. There is a link on um, today's Quilter website. It's actually listed ah. in the instructions. Oh, right. Um, and Lynn gives a, a nice written... Ah, there's a bit of information. Oh, yeah. Information. So you can go to a link on today's Link's down there. It's not essential, but it's a nice little, um, you know, added little tip, like yeah. Angie was saying. I mean, I've picked up all sorts from you this morning already. I suppose as well, <laughs> on the sewing quarter, people message in, people on the Facebook group share ideas yeah, and that really sort good. of thing. But it's a great way of learning, especially for me, who's a novice. Who's <laughs> I clueless. said to you this morning, didn't I? I said, you'll soon know yeah. everything you need to know. Well, it's like I thought you'd have to sit there making triangles, just start <laughs> chopping them all out, whereas <laughs> yeah, I've learned already a new way. <laughs> so I've just stitched along the blue lines, as the instructions say. Yeah. And then what we're going to do, you can see from oh, that wow. side. Um, so I can take the pins out now because it's so all secure. Neat. Little tiny stitches. Yeah. And then we're going to trim on the red Right. Lines. So we're going to cut straight through the middle and straight through the middle that way and trim the outer as well. This yeah. is why I've got the, um, I get the tourney tape, the tourney mat today. The tourney mat, <laughs> yes, you've got one. <laughs> Yay! All the um, instructions, like we were just going through about the template, all that will be in the instructions. You don't have to remember everything. And also because no. it's on replay, um, you can rewatch it back as well. Yeah, you can. When you get um, your kit, you can uh, watch it back and make it with Ange. <laughs> So you can, yeah. Oh, you can, wow. So, yeah, we're just going to chop now. And the nice, the beauty of the turning table is I don't have to pick it up and or, move it yeah. or at home because I don't have one. Um, I tend to do this kind of thing on the edge of my table so I can get to it from two sides. Yeah, it's a handy gadget um, to have that. It is, it? yeah. Just slice straight through. As I say, you don't use your best copy of paper. No. Um, use your thin, cheaper stuff. It's a bonus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trim down these. And you're cutting as well, you make sure it's on something. Imagine cutting on someone's dining room yeah. table. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, don't uh, ruin someone's table. I'm just no. going to turn that, that's just easier. Fascinating, it really fascinates me all this. I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised, yeah. If you've never done uh, what uh, you're getting a wealth of knowledge today. I know. I've been making That's bags, really cool. I've been making quilts. And <laughs> no no um, end to my talent, how I'll learn. Just think of all the free lessons you're getting by being here. I know, yeah, but people will pay a fortune, <laughs> won't they? <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, no, I saw it. Because you teach as well, don't you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, teach free motion embroidery and uh, free motion quilting. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so right. we've cut all those bits and made a mess. Um, oh, I've not quite gone through there. It's one of the things I was going to say to Chris, actually. How old, how old's the blade in the rotary cutter? Ah, <laughs> yes, Chris. <laughs> but have I didn't. you changed it's it not, recently? It's not Chris's <laughs> fault because I didn't ask. If you have ever missed with your rotor cut, cut that was just a single thread. Yeah, just um, a little snip. It's often easier to go back in with a pair of scissors. Not, yes. Not, don't try and go That's back in with the rotary cutter. We've got yeah. uh, a bin under here somewhere, haven't we? I think we should have a little uh, bucket normally here. Oh, it's oh, yes. quite full. Shall I, uh, I'll, I'll be the bin lady. <laughs> I'll do the bin. Oh, it is quite full, isn't it? We should be it able to. It is full. There we go. Make a mess. Get rid of all that. I know I made a mess of my sewing room with this too. Yeah. There we go. I'll pop it down there. If you need the bin, just holler. <laughs> <laughs> so loaded. now um, I'm sure most some of the views have done half square triangles before. Yeah. So it's a very similar principle. When we open these and press them, ah, right. we've got uh, half square triangles. That's now. amazing. Um, the other little addition that Lynn's put on the template is the green lines oh, right, that okay. were in the corners. Yeah. So then we can make more mess <laughs> and just cut these off. Just show you on there if you can so, yeah. close up. So I'm just trimming along the green line on these. I'll just trim a couple to show. There we go. We got them. There you can so see you the green see line. The green in the corners. She's added that to the template, which normally you open the half square triangle up, press it, and then you trim the dog ears yeah. off afterwards. Uh, but by trimming them beforehand, then that's, that, that makes that lovely and square. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, um, it says in the instructions to press at every seam. Yeah. And it says press as preferred. Oh, right. Okay. Do you want the iron? <laughs> uh, um, Shall I plug this in? We can do it. Well, yes, we can do a, a couple. I have actually pre-prepared some to save you ironing. Yes, save lots. me ironing, yeah. <laughs> but we, yeah, we might have to do a little bit. We'll um, get one ready just in case. Yeah. So when I was making this block for the first time, even if you've made a block similar, I yeah. always like to run through how someone's, you know, wants the design doing. So um, I did this the way I would normally do half square triangles. We would normally press to the dark side. Oh, yeah. So um, we'd press that seam yeah. flat and then we'd press it over to the dark side so that the red is sitting underneath the red and not showing through the cream. So initially when I made this block, that's the way I did it. Yeah. Uh, and then when I come to put the block together with all the other elements, there was a hell of a lot of seams coming yeah. together. And so I actually thought when I make this again, I'd press all the seams press open. Press them all open, Because right. I did actually press um, some of the seams afterwards. I pressed them open to yeah. save on bulk. Um, yeah, we can see that. Show you that there. Um, but I think it, it would actually help your points on the triangles if you actually press them so open at this point. you just press them all open? Press them all open. Um, I've got some here that I've already made prepared, earlier, mm -hmm. so we don't have to sit and press them all. And I just think they're much sharper and um, they will just lie flatter. And obviously yeah. then when you come to quilt it, you want to um, try not to have too many yeah. bulky seams. So uh, we can actually tear these off. Oh, right. Um, okay. So Please. we can, if we fold it back along one of the perforated, you know, the, the edges, and there you can see they come away. Oh, wow, that quite easily. really easily. Yeah, so, um, but uh, yeah, as I say, I don't think I we've thinking, ever done. I do you have to pick it up? No. <laughs> <laughs> so they do, as with the tiny stitches, you can just hold that down. Yeah. That's actually. Um, and that's when you'd press it. And then you can press this. Yeah, as I say, then you can press them open. So those little bits it's will bit just come out. Before, if you're pressing to one side, you can press them with the paper on and yeah. take it away afterwards. But obviously, right. pressing them open, it's easier to press okay. that. Okay. So, so I've just um, put the iron on that. Press yeah. it down. You can too. Yeah. Uh, oh, we'll shall I get the ironing mat out? Oh. A couple that are. They're trusting me with an iron. I'll tear this <laughs> off. Yeah, Hannah's terrified me with an iron. <laughs> Because there's quite a lot to get through today, I thought I'd yeah. pre-prepare some. Be prepared, because, here's what um, you made earlier. It's nice to show the elements that people are interested in seeing. There we go. Well, it's a different method easy. as well, though, isn't it, yeah. that you've done? That's it. There we go. That's it pressed, isn't it? Lovely. <gasps> My first yeah. pressing bit of quilting. So I'll just finger press. And I tend to sort of finger press first as well. OK. Um, just then, you're not pushing things around yeah. too much with the iron. No. 
Um, that's I cool. love those two different fabrics together as well. They work beautifully. Yeah, they look. It was a really difficult choice. Even to, you know, I think that's what when people get their bundle. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be oh, which ones do which I ones together? do I use? That's the dilemma. You'll probably spend so much time trying to decide which ones. To when put I together. go over there, I'll show through the fabrics a bit more. Let me. Uh, beautiful. Oh, another you one. Got a couple. Pressed. There yeah, we go. So we've got. Look two. at that. There's the two different fabrics that you can see. That's it. Yeah, I matched the lovely paisley up with this lovely, um, it's like a fleur-de-lis kind of fabric, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, such a selection, isn't yeah. there? Shall I turn this iron off now? You can do, yeah. So then, um, you, as you can see from the pattern, these half square, square triangles go together um, to make, we make, we make four cream points, if you like. Yeah. You know, not red ones, they're cream points. You can see we're making that section there. Oh, okay, you know. Okay. So then you would just stitch those together. And again, because we've flattened the seam, because we've opened the seam, yeah. if they were pressed one way, you'd then have like eight ah, bits of fabric. Would, yes. Because they'll yeah. all be pressed the same way. Um, so on the red side, you'd have a lot of bulk there. Right. But because we've opened the seam, you can see they just sit lovely and flat together. Nice. And then you'd just sew a quarter inch seam, which is what I've done here. And then again, you've got, I've pressed that seam open. Oh, lovely. Oh, okay. um, Sue's messaged in. She's loving your hair colour. Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, from Kentshire. She's loving the farmhouse quilt. And Angela's hair colour is lovely. That's Sue in Maidstone. Hi, Sue. Oh, thank you, Sue. Yeah, it's lovely colour. I was watching you the other day. I was saying on the internet and you had darker hair. <laughs> I used to have it this colour in my 30s. And I've been trying to get it this colour for ages. And nothing's quite yeah, happened. Yeah, it's so lovely. I, so I went bold. <laughs> bold. It looks really nice. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I'm growing it a little bit, so you oh, need a bit you? of... When you're growing something out and it's a bit boring, you're the in-between stages, yeah, you want a bit of... Yeah, because it stops you cutting it, doesn't it? Yeah. So when you get to that point, you're like, oh, I need to cut it off, yeah, so you so change your colour change instead. Change the colour and give yourself a bit, of a, a bit of a change. Yeah, it's lovely. Thank you. So we've got our four, um, four. points yeah. put together like that. And then the centre bit is traditional piecing. Okay. So we've got uh, a square in the centre. Right. As I say, the instructions are great. They tell yeah. you each element to cut out. So we're going to join, I'm now going to join these two, two. sides. Yeah. Okay. If you can keep um, an eye on the time for me. I will. Obviously, I want to get onto the farmhouse um, yes. block as well. So quarter inch seam now. We can take it to a normal um, stitch length for this. Got a couple more minutes with the star before we get to the other side, and just so you know. Okay, great. And I'm just going to change it to, um, I think it's zero six for my quarter inch. Yeah, stitch six. It's very modern sewing machine that. I know when I'm, my mum's old one she had year when I was tiny. It was like retro. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I want the six eighty soon. Everyone wants. Everyone goes on about the six eighty. It is lovely. Um, okay. And it's great if you've got a thread cutter for this type of piecing um, yeah. because you're not then pulling out and wasting lots of thread. So, um, yeah, yeah, I noticed that actually, that yeah. pulling out loads of thread. I, um, I used to, I sold and demonstrated sewing machines for a number of years oh, yeah. while I was building up my, you know, my own um, textile. Oh, yeah. And um, when I first saw scissors on a sewing machine, I was like, hmm, mm, bit of a yeah. gimmick, you know, Will is it, it a bit work? gimmicky? But actually, you know, I, I mean, I've stitched on an, uh, an older machine for a long time without the scissor function. But when yeah. you have it, <laughs> you, then, you know, you wouldn't be without it. Yeah, we're just actually going to show the button that we're talking about, uh, okay. just so you know. Yeah. The... That's so amazing. I, you know, I didn't even know there. that. That's incredible. Yeah, so you've got the scissors there. Oh. Needle up, needle down is brilliant because, yeah. it, you know, it helps you. Um, you can tell the machine to stop with the needle down. This is securing on the spot, reverse, and your scissor function, though. It's just brilliant to just press that. And then you're not... Because thread's expensive. You use good yeah. quality thread. And um, so you're pulling that out each time, especially if you've got a big piece under yeah. there. You know, pull it, yeah. trying to get out and trim underneath. So uh, Hannah's just said there's a special bundle of that coming up at 11 oh, o'clock yes. today. Yeah. Exciting. So I'm finger pressing this just to yeah. save time, but obviously but you, you would just press, press it this normally. With the yeah. iron. So mm. we've got our two pieces there, and then the next two pieces that are cut for this block. Right, and all those you've side. cut, they're all the, all the templates do come in the instructions. Yeah. So you can see, I just do if we're if we're getting close on time, maybe yeah. I'll uh, move on. While we're we doing that, I'm going to move over to set two. Okay. So I'll leave you to I'll, do that. I'll I'm stitch just going these to talk on. through the, no take the instructions with me. <laughs> yeah, those now, lovely fabrics. 
This bundle that we've got here, you are getting absolutely everything that you see in this bundle. It's incredible. Over a third of the stock, nearly half the stock, has been completely checked out and sold and gone. There are people who've got it in their baskets. Um, and again, I don't want it to be like, quick, get it, get it, get it. But Hannah's just, I'm just telling, we are, we do have a limited number of them. This is the bundle that's been, well, it's been bundled for us. It's been put together so that we can bring you all the different fabrics. So we've never seen these fabrics on air before. Shall we have a look through some of the fabrics? Let me, um, I'm going to show you those three first. Oh, you're getting so many. They're not all half metres either. You've got some of the fat quarters if you'll need. So you've got all the beautiful, oh, look at those little stars. All the little ditzy prints that you've got on there. All the different scales that you'll need. Let me, yeah, should we have some darker ones over here? <gasps> over 30 of these different prints that you're getting all in this bundle. It's incredible. Look at those. Beautiful. Absolutely good. So you also don't forget you're getting the wadding, you're getting your thread, you're getting all your instructions. You've got your paisleys in there as well. Let me show you these top three. Look at those. There you go. Shall I put these? Should we actually try and show them all? Uh, are you able to? Here we go. Let's have a look. Well, let me show you them one. There we go, I'll show you a selection of them so you can see all the reds there. Look at those. All the different designs, patterns, you've got like little squares, there's triangles, um, stripes in there, paisleys. Such a beautiful, and all this is coming in the, in the bundle. And then you've got the creams. The look here. Aren't they beautiful? Just so many different designs. You're getting so much. 15 metres of fabric in total that you're getting. That's loads, isn't it? You've also got your back, um, backing fabric and your binding fabric. You've also got as well your threads. And up here you've got your wadding as well. And you've got your instructions. I'm just going to show you again through the instructions. It's a Lynn Goldsworth um, design. Um, so we're going to, what's great is it's all step by step in there. So it's telling you literally. And one of my questions I had was, I've never quilted before. Would I be able to do it? And it is literally, when I've been speaking to Angie, because um, we only met her a few hours ago, you know, the way she explained it through, it's in, it, is, it is step by step. Then you've got all the templates here. Because again, I was like, oh, well, what happens if the shapes aren't the same size? I know people who quilt know that, but for somebody who didn't, I was like thinking, oh, I'd have all different shapes and sizes, but you've got all the shapes and sizes there. You trace them, your foundation piecing. Then you've got the template that you saw Angie using before to make the triangles, which is incredible. And obviously what we mentioned as well, there's little tips that Lynn mentioned. Uh, you can have a look down there as well. There we go, we've got a picture of the bundle so you can see it all together. There, look at that, that's what you're getting. <coughs> You will get everything just to get going. That's a nice thing. If you've never quilted before, uh, you could either gift the bundle or you could, it's got everything if you're a beginner, if you're wanting just to, another project to do. Um, you've got everything in there that you need, which is perfect, isn't it? Again, um, Hannah's just told me again, nearly half the stock has gone now. So please make sure just check out your basket. We just don't want people to miss out. because It's the first time that we've offered a bundle like this. Um, so I don't want anybody to miss out on the price as well. It's incredible. Also, as we're going to have a look, we talked about Lynn. Um, Lynn works a lot with our sister magazine, which you can have a look here. If you go onto our website today, you click on the banner that moves around there and you can get make a subscription. They have subs um, subscription offers to those three magazines. Lim works a lot with today's quilter. It's more of an intermediate level, tr uh, those traditional blocks, that sort of thing. But we do subscriptions where you can get a subscription deal. So you can get, is it three for five pounds? So if you've never tried it before, it's a great way to you know, try three magazines. There's also Simply Sewing. Jo Carter works a lot with those and her soft toys. 
And then you've got patchwork and quilting as well. Lots of your contemporary quilts and designs in there. We have such a connection with those as our sister magazines and <coughs> our designers and sometimes some of the products, fe um, projects feature in them, that sort of thing as well. Um, so it's a great way to explore and extend your knowledge as well. Especially with that offer, that's great. Should we go across back to Angie to see uh, how she's doing with her block? Yeah. It's all go over here. Oh, I'll get me instructions quickly, sorry. I'm just putting this last square on because I think oh, this wow. will then demonstrate how the whole block goes together without, you know, quite making it. Um, so I've wow. just realised I did ha actually have the um, points pointing the wrong way that oh, we're yeah. pointing out. <laughs> but when you come to put it together, you, you soon realise that. So it's I've incredible. stitched, I put the centre square together, just traditional piecing. Obviously, I haven't pressed these seams. Yeah. Um, then I've added two of my my point, the, point. the cream yeah. points, as you can see, they're pointing in. So just make sure you get that the right way around. And by doing your quarter inch seam there, what you're aiming to do is not chop off the, the edge of your point. Oh, right, yeah. Keep you your points nice and sharp. sharp yeah. uh, but I have to say, I think they're, they're sitting much nicer having been pressed open. Yes. So you add the two sides on first, and then you can add the, the instructions for this block tell you to cut these squares for the corners. Yeah. Um, you add those then to this piece, and then this piece is then added in the same way. It will be stitched on there. Right. And again, you, you'd, you'd be stitching your quarter inch seam would just go through that point. Okay. And there you've got another one there. So um, yeah, just make sure you don't nip your points off. But it's so accurate, I think, because yeah. it's been foundation paper piece to that then you'd be there with your star wow. block. Have we got that on here? Can we point that one yeah. out? Yeah, so, the, uh... um, well, right in, either right in the centre. Ah, so, yes, there it is. Yeah. <coughs> if that's... Um, oh, it's so the... clever. Yeah, how it all... because you don't see it as... You, you see this as a block, don't you? Yeah. On, on point, and it's not... Because obviously it's piecing up. Yeah, so it's that, that area there. Oh, wow. Um, oh, I'm going to get yeah. a bit obsessed with quilting. <laughs> I want to do it. It is very addictive, I have to I say. Know, I could just sit here all day and watch yeah. you. And the I don't say anything now. So. <laughs> uh, and, and like you say, the beauty of it is that we've probably seen so many half square triangle star blocks over yeah. the past year on sewing quarter. Right. But you don't, you know, then you put it with another block and it has a whole new yeah. life. So. Oh, my word. So, yeah, that's how we, and those, they go not quite nice together, don't they? The fabrics as they well. Do. The fabrics really. are beautiful. I mean, the selection that you're getting is incredible, isn't it? You're getting so loads. That's our star block. So, that's the star. So, yeah. is it the house one now? So, now we're going to move on to the farmhouse, which I've right. got some pieces prepared again. Is this a traditional block then, the farmhouse? Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen a few sort of different house, yes. house blocks. And I believe that um, Lynn Goldsworthy got into quilting after a trip to America. Oh, was it? Um, oh, right. So she went to America, and obviously in America, quilting's huge. It's huge, yeah. Um, so she was inspired, but um, couldn't get quite into it straight away because of family. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, as soon as she could, it, so it was over in America, oh. that was her inspiration. So, yeah, wow. really lovely. So, it's nice to know that, yeah, how everyone gets into it. Absolutely. It? This is the template um, sheet for the farmhouse block right and i will say you do have to be a little bit organized <laughs> yeah <laughs> cutting all these pieces so um i've prepared some of them due to time which i'll come on to i've made two of them and i'm going to make two hopefully here this morning oh, right okay just to recap the templates come in your instructions as well so there's one of them. I'm going to do um, this simple one here. Right. Because this one that I've pre-made, um, it's very similar, sewing the panels together. So um, the house is put together in four different blocks. Okay, yep. And it does show you that in the instructions, actually. Yep, do you want me to yeah, if you find right. that in the instructions. Um, and again... There's the house block templates. So does it show you... Yes, yeah, so there. you've got the individual pieces. I don't know if we can see that. We've got the four individual pieces, how they sit together on the illustration yeah. there. So that's great. It's very clear, isn't yes, it? Yes, very um... clear, yeah. Um, and one thing to remember, like with this template, it's obviously, it's a symmetrical design, so it doesn't matter which way you have it. But uh, on this one, for instance, because we're working in reverse, yeah. um, you'll see that the template's the opposite way around to the house. Okay. Um, so they have, they have been put in reverse right. for oh, right. you, so don't let that sort of confuse oh, yeah. you. Yeah. So um, 
cut them out, obviously uh, you've got a little bit of space between them. And uh, what I always do with foundation piecing is I always draw my lines on the back too. Oh yeah. That's why I really like a, a bit more of a see-through paper. Yeah. If you do put it on a white table, actually, you can see through quite yeah. easily. Um, and you'll see that I've extended my lines hugely. Um, right. Even That's a handy tip from yeah. you, isn't it? <laughs> Angie's tip. I we're, like them. We're going to be stitching sort of here is the stitch line. Yeah. If you can see off on there, um, you know, it, yeah. that just goes to the end. But I've extended this line almost right through right. the next block. And I always, as well, another little tip is you can see I've marked this dotted blue line. Yeah. We're going to sew one and two together as the first pieces initially. Oh, right. Okay. And this is a quarter inch. Right. Okay. So... I'll just show you, it might make sense now with my pieces. When you're cutting again all the instructions, it will tell you for each block yeah. uh, what to cut. And then you separate it into piles because these are numbered A, B, C and D. Right, that's so then, the key yeah. to get it all. So that's why I've got a little envelope this morning with all my prep. <laughs> oh, um, Teresa's messaged in. Do we know that? Um, what's the finished size of the farmhouse quilt? Should be on the instructions. It should somewhere be, like yes. That. I think it's. Uh, Where's it gone? Thanks for your message, six. Teresa. I'll let you find yes, that. Yes, I'll, I'll carry yeah. on. Yeah, don't worry, I'll have a. It is on there, I have seen it. So I'm going to place uh, my first oh. piece again. Uh, we're, we're sitting. Do you want to? Have you found it? I have, yes. 62 inches by 82 inches. I thought it finisher. was 60 something, I yes. remember seeing. 62 by 82, <laughs> Teresa. Okay, so I'm going to place my first piece. So um, as you can see, we've got the tinted um, on the template, the tints yeah. of the red. Okay, I was going to ask so, you that. What's yeah. that for? So we've got those two, those three pieces. And don't okay. be alarmed. This is I checked the instructions. This one's a bit longer. Right. Um, but that's what the instructions say. And then this one will be here. Okay. So that's what we've got cut out. Okay. So piece one goes down. And because we've extended the lines and drawn them on the back, yeah. again, I'm not having to... That's really oh, good. You know, that to me. Because yeah. then, when I do foundation piece and everything moves, yeah, you know, um, and so because I've got my lines extended, I can see um, this is the quarter inch seam guide. I've drawn on my seam guide between numbers one and two, so I can see that that's going to sit in yeah. as well between there. So I can position that, and then you would again, um, this one then goes over on top of it, and you would pin. But now, because these are quite tiny pieces. A little thing that I've been doing is get your glue pen out. Oh, this is new to me, the glue pen. <laughs> so I found this really useful tool with foundation piecing because it's just going to hold. Oh. I find by the time I've got it to the machine, it's, it's twisted. Moved. Yeah, ah, so instead of using the machine, you'll do the glue pen. Yeah, and especially for this little tiny block where the chimneys are, they're such tiny pieces yeah. trying to pin them. That could be quite fiddly. Um, if very fiddly, yeah. So I'm going to hold my red one in place. Then I'll stick a pin. I know that it's not going to move oh. too much. I haven't put too much glue on there. It's just to give it a little bit of tack. Oh, it's a textiles glue, this, just in case you've not seen this before. It's not permanent. Used a lot in, um, is it English paper piecing? Yeah, absolutely. And you can get it on the website. Won't damage your machine or anything like that. And it's um, sort of semi-permanent because with EPP, you peel it away, the yeah. paper away, so it's not permanent. Right. So then I flip this over and I'm going to stitch from down between A1 between and A2. A1 and A2, yeah. Uh, stitch a couple of um, stitches over this uh, into another seam. Yeah. If you're going to the outer edge, you can stitch all the way. Right, okay. okay. So I'm going to do that now. Oh, I'm slide like those along. Well, I know, yeah. They're nice tools to have, aren't they? Yeah. So I'm just lowering my stitch length back down. I love how it's all digital now. Oh, no. Gosh, <laughs> it seems like it's how modern are sewing machines nowadays? <laughs> they do make life actually easier. A lot of yeah. people can be terrified of going digital, but it's actually super easy yeah. to use. Okay. So then we should have that in position, and right. then that will reach over because. Sometimes what happens is you, you, you don't put that in the right place and as you fold it over, it hasn't got enough for right. the next okay. seam allowance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So and again, folded. you can press this um, with the iron between yeah. each one, but I'll just finger press for now. 
Yeah. And then, um, so those are kind of my tips with foundation piecing. Um, I use the glue pen to hold things in place and extending all the lines and actually putting that first quarter inch line really helps me get started. Yeah, that's um, so handy as well for people to see those little extra little tips that you've yeah. got that can make someone who's never quilted before go, what do I yeah. do to make it just simple? <laughs> that's it. And then the tip I actually learned, as I say, it's really nice to, you know, even if you know or you're a, an experienced quilter, sometimes it's good to follow someone else's instructions. Yeah. And by following the tutorial for foundation piecing on today's quilter that Lynn Goldsworthy wrote, I picked up a little tip. We always usually stitch the seam and then like I will do now, we fold the paper back. And what we're going to do now, because we've actually put the quarter inch seam yeah. there already, we're not going to have that much to trim off, hopefully. We should actually have quarter an inch. But if you hadn't, if you'd guessed it, you might have a bit more to trim off. So we, what we're initially going to do, put it the right way up. This is a add a quarter ruler uh, and right. it's got this little um, groove that then oh, sits into the bulk of that folded back. Those um, will be um, underneath on the web um, after the auction. Limited stuff on the quilt. So we're wasting... On the rulers. On, on the Sorry, limit. on the rulers, <laughs> limited stuff. We're, we're not wasting a lot of fabric there. So um, that's traditionally what you do. But then Lynn, Lynn suggests that you fold trim, not after okay. each seam afterwards. Yeah. Normally we'd put the next seam on and trim after. Trim, yeah. Trim before. Oh, right, Which okay. I've never oh, done before. So now I'm going to fold the template between two and three. Yeah. Fold that over and then we're going to fold our fabric over where it, it will sit. And I'm going to trim this now before I've stitched it, which um, right. I've never done this That's before. That's another tip from there. Uh, <laughs> so there you go, it's yeah. all different uh, message. Oh, just quickly, thank you, Penny from Devon, for your lovely message. Uh, Becky, my name is. Uh, but thank you. No, it's um, thank you, Penny. Uh, lovely to get a message from you. Aww. Glad you're enjoying the show. So now, what this does by trimming beforehand, again, a bit like I drew on my quarter inch seam. Yeah. This, now it's been trimmed, it's actually giving me something to align the next piece to. Oh, right. So again, if this was over, yeah. I'd be trying to guess where my Tra quarter yeah. inch yeah. seam was. Um, so again, if you, it's a bit fiddly, I can stick a bit of glue. Oh, I love that glue. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not going to budge. Stick that down. If you didn't have the glue pen, what would you? You would be um, pinning. pinning or, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just a bit sort of. I find it a little bit fiddly, to yeah. be honest. I mean, if you I mean, are I am going to. I am going to. I am going to put a pin in. Yeah. As well, but I just find if things are flapping up. Yeah. By the because you have to flip this over, um, and you don't. You can't put a pin where you're going to sew. No, oh, no, you can't. Um, well, I know so that. The pin, <laughs> yeah, the pin's over here. Yeah. And so therefore, things can flip up and yeah. you know, move. So I'm just going to do the next one. Oh, just a quick reminder on the actual stock of the quilt. I mean, I'm leaning here like I'm on my holidays. I'm, <laughs> I'm so into the quilt. I love it. I'm in that learning. I'm like, I want to go and quilt. I want the sewing machine, the quilt. <laughs> um, <laughs> this bundle includes everything. So you're getting your thread, you're getting the wadding, you're getting the instructions, you're getting all those different fabrics over 15 meters 15 meters of fabric the fat quarters that you need um it is just perfect it's a great one if you've you know if you're after a new project so when you're when this arrives you've got everything to get going yes so you can get the thread half the stock has been checked out but there's wow. still people with it in the basket so um make sure you you know, check it out. Whenever we bring a bundle like this, it's always really, really popular, especially Lynn Goldsworthy design as well. Absolutely. It is lovely to have everything sorted for you and that great selection of fabrics, because that's is. often what people struggle with, yeah. is choosing the Which right one? fabric. So It's all done for you, isn't it? So we've got our three pieces there, looking a bit strange, but it all comes together in the end. Yeah. And I've just popped a bit of glue on that end, especially end pieces, because yeah. they're flapping around. Look and now we're, we're going on to um, piece four now. Piece four. And again, I'm folding it first yeah. before I put it in place. And I'm going to trim off. If, yeah. I, ah, if right. I didn't trim that off, I'd be thinking... Which, where do oh, I... Where, where, how far do I place this yeah. over? And although I draw my extended lines on, um, there's not much room no. on the paper to see. So, it's so by to trimming it off initially, it gives me that lovely quarter of an inch. Yeah. So I'm guessing as well with quilting, it's not something you guess at, is it? No. You go, well, I'll just give it a little chop there, that'll work. 
Yes, it's if you like if you like baking like that or or cooking. Um, I'm a yeah, baker. I'm like that I prefer I to bake. Cook, you see, yeah. I, I'd, um, I prefer baking because it's accurate measuring, isn't it? Ah, <laughs> see, I'm kind of open the fridge and throw it all in. I can cook, but it's throw it in and we'll see what happens. So now I've chopped that off. So I've got a lovely um, guide to put yeah. that against. And then this last piece. So that. And like you say, I can just pop a pin away from the piecing, and I can just do that last one. Gosh. And we can well, I've got my right story when I'm a quilter. I'll be able to say I was on the sewing floor to work with a lady called Anne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be nice. She inspired me. <laughs> Just going to show you again all the fabrics that we get in here. This is amazing. So many yeah, beautiful colours, different patterns. And like we say, it's everything that you're getting in. It's the whole of everything. Some people, like we're saying, have difficulty choosing the colours, the yeah. selection that you've got. New fabrics there to us at Sewing Forth as well, just for this quilt. Lovely. Okay. And right. then what you can do is then you would trim it down again with that big flappy piece. You yes. press that, but I've put, popped a bit of glue pen on. Of glue, yeah. And then you trim to the dotted line. Oh, and you're just going to show that fabric again. There we go. Just want to get, someone's asked to see it closer. Oh, um, the bundle. Yeah. <gasps> So many different ones. Oh, it was so lovely. That's what it was like this morning. Love yeah, this. coming in way down with Look your bag. This. <laughs> this is it just gorgeous. And Hannah was like, oh, is that how it's going to It's like Christmas when it arrived at home. <laughs> gorgeous, yeah. On my, uh, on, my, on my landing all week because... <laughs> <Has it> been? <laughs> in a box. Because <laughs> I've, you know, I've taken four fat quarters out of that as well, yeah. obviously. Um, you do also get the red plain, which I haven't mentioned yet, oh, right. because can you see on the quilt behind me, there's the border. Yes, I was going to yeah. ask you about this. And so you get the border and the binding fabric as right. well. I feel like we need all day to do this. I've got so many things I want to... <laughs> I'll be asking after and, you, and, and you'd cut... I think you could probably... Yes, it's the type of quilt you wouldn't do in one go, obviously. No, um, let alone in an hour yeah, live no. on air with me. <laughs> It's some idiot asking you questions left, right and centre. <laughs> um, but no, you could just choose a couple and do, you know, do your blocks as you go. There you, so there you can see we've got this section. That bit done. Ah. House. So you've got eight minutes left, Angie. OK. Will it so be all finished? <laughs> I've got um, the other two pieces here. Yeah. Um, and oh, I had a bit of an... Uh, I lost... Somebody called me making this. And oh, you know no. when you lose concentration. <laughs> and when I come to put all the bits together... I'd, I think I've sewn every piece of that the wrong way up and the wrong way around. I, th oh, I sewed no. the chimneys before I'd put the roof on. I had to unpick it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and this one I got the wrong way around as well. Obviously, make sure that you put this piece yes. with the cream that butts up to the, to the door. To concentrate. That's yeah, you what have I, to need concentrate. To do. I need to concentrate. Yeah. And then we've got our roof piece and our chimneys. But this is the one with the tiddly little pieces where the glue yeah. pen comes in handy. What I wanted to just try and um, start with you is making this one because this has got the some diagonal lines on it. Okay, yes. Rather than I just want straight to learn lines. about diagonal lines. So it's much the same principle. Yeah. I just thought maybe people might be a bit more um, freaked out by it. So yeah. <laughs> again, the, the design is in reverse. Yeah. And you and can see I've it. extended all of my lines hugely. So it gives me all of that um, That is guidance. such a handy tip, especially for me. Um, oh, just turn it over as well, Anne, so they can see yeah. the other side. So. You've just copied it onto the... Yeah, so this is your stitching line. Yeah. But when you put your fabric, you can't see so you know. but where to place it on the reverse. So I've just copied, traced them over, but extended them as far as you can. And then between one and two, I've put a little quarter inch dotted line too. So I've got all my bits here. Let me just work out which way they which go. Which way they go, yeah. Um, the skinny bit is number three. Oh, Val's messaged in. Hi, Val. Um, what machine is Angie using, please? Like in the half square triangle tips. I'm glad you like the tips. It's the 680. Yeah. We've got a deal with that coming up at 11 o'clock, the um, 680 with a, a bundle, I believe, as well, is it? Yeah. Um, I think it's great. I'm learning all about it. I know a lot of ladies, um, a lot of people here have spoken about the 680. Um, so a lot of people, lots of guests use it and have it. It's a bit weird. When, when the show first started, I think I was the only get a designer that really went straight for the 680 because I'd worked in a sewing machine oh, shop yeah. and I was used to sort of all the gadgets um, and I know I think everyone uses it. Yeah, I think it's great. <laughs> I didn't know there was like scissors option. <laughs> um, so I've just placed You've my placed biggest piece yeah. um, 
because one, C1 is the biggest piece. Yeah. And C2 is in the corner here. Um, and this is where I'm saying now, if you were trying to place this blind, I, you know, you'd be yeah. holding it up to the light, trying to see through the lights. So I've got my extended line yeah. there and my dotted line to get that first quarter oh, inch. I can see, so I can just pop it on there. If you want to, you can do a double check. So pin through roughly a quarter of an inch if yeah. that, you know, helps you. So you can see that's more or less oh, on yeah. the line. And then you can just press that back and make sure it's going to cover where it needs to cover to your wow. dotted line. But um, I would have never have got that in that place without those guys no, to help me. No, that's Well, I'll tell you if I am, mine wouldn't look like that anyway. Yeah. So uh, foundation piecing can be great, but it can also be quite frustrating if you don't, you know, without some of these tips to help you position. Yeah. And then obviously we're stitching. Um, sometimes because you've got the lines on this side, you don't even have to flip it over. No, which is <laughs> easier, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I have I've done. got four minutes left. Oh, okay. you, Angie. She will be back at 11 o'clock uh, for some more yeah. handy tips on other things. Free motion. I want to keep you on yeah, air for the whole there. time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's good to do just a couple of angles um, on air just to show. And again, this is like, that's flapping around. Yeah, so to stop it flapping, um, a bit of you glue. You can just pop a bit of glue on oh. there to hold that down. And then you just continue with the process. Um, again, the tip about uh, trimming beforehand yeah. comes in brilliantly here. Yes, so as you can see the We're going to trim between three and four, fold the paper back, and I'm going to trim that. Get my ruler the right way up. Like yeah, yeah, it sounds tough. I thought you'd be sat there cutting out all these tiny little bits, but it's not, is it? It's yeah. all piecing. They, it I together. mean, they are. It is fiddly piecing, and that's why really it's been invented foundation piecing. Yeah. Um, to be able to manage it. But now I've trimmed that off. You see, I can, you can see, see can't yeah, you? where to pop this. I can line that up. Oh, I love this. Yeah. People get. To, it's a bit of a, 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 you have to switch your brain a little bit for foundation piecing because yeah. you're working in reverse. But once you've got your headspace into it, then it's, um, people do love the precision of it, and which is why it's been invented. Yeah, it's very neat. I think that's yeah. why I like it. It is. I'm quite, um, sort of OCD and things. I like things quite just so, and that's why I think yeah. I quite like it. It's very yeah. neat. So don't let the angles um, concern you. They have given the, the fabric pieces enough yeah. scope to cover, you can see there. And then we just continue. I'm going to, depending, until, until you tell fabulous. me you've run out of time so and you have to disappear. <laughs> I'll just keep going. <laughs> when you're laying out the blocks, is it easy um, to interlock into the pattern? Is it or what, sorry? Just... Oh, yes, I should, without carrying on, maybe I'll talk about how the blocks go together. Um, just a couple of questions. Yeah. And... So you'd have your roof that would go on there. You can see how those yeah. four four pieces go together now, I think. Um, then what you do, you make all of your blocks in that way. Um, how many were there? 14. Oh, was it a 14 however, and an 18, an 18 or something? Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Make them all pop, make them all up. And then yep. what you want to do is lay them out as you fancy your pattern going together. So you together. can choose how yeah, you... you can yeah. choose which ones you put next to each other. And then, as you can see, um, our the house block, when you've got it to that point, you then yes. sash it. Um, we've got two ah. extra, four extra bits of fabric, so yeah. they go on the edges. So they would go on two on the outside and then the two longer ones yeah. to make that the same size. And there's as the templates star for that as well. Yeah, um, well, not um, templates, but cutting, cutting instructions. Right. Yeah. So, um, but you can see we have no corn. There's no red corners on no. that. And in the design, we have <gasps> red corners. So there's four red corners on some of them. Yeah. This one has two because it's on the outer yeah. edge. And in the corners, do you see there's only one? One up there, yeah. Yeah. So when you lay your blocks out, you would then know. So I need two red corners on this block. I need four on this block. And that's done the way we normally do half square yeah. triangles. So you've got your red squares uh, drawn on a, a diagonal line through the centre. Wow. Put that on your over the corner. Oh, 
Can you, is the camera okay there? Am I okay? I've literally got yeah. a minute left with you. Stitch there and fold and back. Fold it and, ah. and then so that's the uh, a traditional way. I think people know oh, how wow. to add the corners. But yeah. yeah, lay it all out to decide which ones you put oh. your red corner. Do you know, for me being brand new to quilting, I've got a million and one questions. <laughs> uh, and I would get a shot, I think, if I stayed here talking all day it about was, it. It was a lot to get um, in, but um, Absolutely hopefully. beautiful, beautiful quilt. Um, Hopefully we've covered all the key techniques for yeah. people at home. Um, and thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm obsessed now with quilting. Um, everyone's saying thank you. They're loving your hair. And thank oh. you for the quilt. They're loving the quilt. Brilliant. Um, we'll see you back at 11 yep. o'clock. You will. Uh, for free motion. <laughs> I'm going to have to scoot over here, no I believe. Problem. Oh, that's your finished quilt that you can see there. So many of you are saying that you love the fabrics, that you love the designs. It's um, 62. I'm just reading it off here. 62 by 82 inches. Um, the quilt, just so you know the size. And this is a quilt kit that's been put together for you. Um, everything's in there. So you've got absolutely everything in there to get going from the instructions, the fa over 15 meters of fabric, the wadding, the thread. When it arrives, it comes in a beautiful box, whether you're wanting to gift it, present for yourself. Um, it's entirely up to you. I think, to be honest, I'd want to keep it. Um, it is gorgeous. So we're just going to have a quick look at all the different colours that you've got in here. Look at them. All quilting weight. Lots of people asking if they're available, if the fabrics are available individually. I'm afraid they're not because they've been put together especially for this, uh, for us. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. It's a premier um, bundle for you here at the sewing quarter. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful. <coughs> oh, I'm choking. I'm not excited. <laughs> Half the stock has gone. <coughs> so um, there are people having it in the basket, so make sure you do check them out because we really wouldn't want you to miss out on getting this. Let's just see that finished quilt again. Absolutely beautiful. <coughs> there you go. So that is what you can get. You can make that from the farmhouse quilting kit there from Lynn's design there. Um, she works a lot with the magazines as well. We've got a special offer on this um, subscription as well. Right, we're going to have a quick break. I'll see you uh, in a couple of minutes' time. I'll see you shortly. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Tune in on Friday 23rd of February for an hour of Sashko Stitching with Jennifer Taylor. Originally a traditional Japanese technique for mending clothes, Sashko uses simple running stitch to create fascinating, intricate patterns. We have everything you need in this hour, from the complete Sashko starter kit to books, templates and accessories will have you stitching in no time. As well as teaching us the technique, Jennifer will be showing us how to apply it to a sewing room storage set. So join us and learn something new on Friday the 23rd of February at 8am, only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. So I'm going to be showing you how to do a hem stitch. Now a hem stitch is just a row of small slanting stitches that are used to secure your hem. So in this case I'm pretending that this is going to be the bottom of a trouser leg. I'm first going to take my needle through the single hem I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail before I place that back down. Then I'm going to do a double stitch. Now this is just where you sew over the same area twice, so you're creating a, a knot. So that's one, two. So that's securing my thread now. And now we can begin doing our hem stitch. So you're going to need to bring your needle in at a diagonal. So you want to pick up a few stitches from what would be the trouser leg before then going into your hem so you can make this stitch a little bit bigger and then repeating that process again at a diagonal I'm going to be picking up a few stitches of the trouser leg and then we can pick up more of the single hem so I'm making these stitches super big so you can see what I'm doing but when you do this at home, you'd want to make these a little bit closer together. Okay, so 
So there's my row of hem stitching. And if I just turn this over, you can see they're very small stitches on the other side. So if you're doing this in a normal thread and not a thick thread, you won't be able to see those at all. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Good morning, you're watching The Same Quarter with me, Becky Blees. Thank you for tuning in. What an absolute amazing hour we've just had with Angie doing the quilting, the farmhouse quilting kit. Um, I've never quilted before and I'm absolutely like, I've just said to her off air, I was like, I'm, I, I love it. I want to ask you so many questions. Um, so well done to everyone who's got that. Make sure there's still some of you've got it in your baskets. Make sure you do check out on that. Now, Angie will be back at 11 o'clock. So in this hour, we've got some fabric collection, some beautiful bright colours again. Um, great for your quilting this time now, sticking with the quilting theme. So we're going to start with one that's always popular, uh, the Bright Rainbow Bundle. You're getting five metres of fabric in this. All the bright colours. So you're getting half a metre of each of these colours in there. These are your Macawa solids. Great stash builder these are. Look at that, they are part of the whole rainbow, nice bright rainbow bundle. You've got real purples in there, you've got a nice striking orange, cornflower blue, like the electric blue, the emerald green, the fuchsia's there, she's back. Uh, the nice striking bright yellow, the reds. These are perfect, say if you're wanting to do quilting, these are great. Again, if you just want to keep them into your stash, maybe you want to make a nice little blouse. If you saw the first hour, they were, um, these, these are 100% cotton again, but these were a lightweight. The other ones were a heavier canvas. So they would be ideal for more sort of bags, furnishings. These are more if you wanted to make a nice blouse to build maybe quilting, uh, build a collection of, you know, add your um, fabrics into your stash. Now, let me show you um, into... There you go. It's the equivalent, half a metre is the equivalent to two fat quarters if you've not bought from us before. There you go. So you're getting five metres of fabric overall. The bundles are great as well, I think, because as I say, you're not just getting one, you're getting a selection of different colours. Great to have those colours in through the different seasons as well. Let me pop this down. Now, whenever we do a rainbow bundle, I've been told, it's always, always popular because again, it's, it's almost like it's got everybody's favorite color in somewhere. I'm gonna, I've made no secret, I'm a bit of a pink girl. Um, although I am eyeing up the silvers and greys and blacks on the right, but um, I, I just love colors. I just, I just love things in general. Um, Futures is beautiful, but everybody likes it. So whether it's you wanted to make, I don't know, a little summer outfit for a little girl, uh, something for a little boy, makes your designer fabrics go further. So when you mix it, you mix it in. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? So you've got, as I say, five meters worth there. Do you want me to show you the purples as well? There we go. When everyone's checked out, we, uh, we're already less, already, already less than 20 uh, when everybody checks out. Sorry, I was half holding that there. That was awful, wasn't it? <laughs> There we go, so that's your lighter purple. There we go, waft it. Look at that, it's gorgeous. See my little eyes are like that, I'm darting around at the different colors. There we go, so again, you can see all the colors in there. Great for mixing, great for different things, great for quilting. Here we go. Now, so that's your rainbow bundle that you've got there. We've got the black and white one now. This is called monochrome. Oh, this is lovely as well. But your graphics will say monotone. Oh, someone once told me I sounded very monotone. <laughs> no, that's quite dull, isn't it, when you say monotone? <laughs> These are from Macawa. 
But in there, you've got your linear texture and you've also got your spots as well. Look at that. And again, you've got the silvers. These are a, um, a great stash builder. Again, it's very useful because again, you've got, like we said before, we've got like the blacks work with lots of different colors. You know, for example, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> had to sneak the fuchsia in. Um, <coughs> and again, the silvers and the grays do as well. And obviously your whites, again, these seem, these seem to be almost like you, sort of like base colours that will work with pretty much everything to an extent. So you can see them there. So these are monochrome, but it says monotone. So we'll just show you the still of the monotone there. So these are, you're getting two and a half metres of this bundle. Beautiful. Now, we've got by the bundle book here, this gives you some uh, ideas of your solid colours uh, that you might want to use. It's one of Hannah's favourite books, this. Should we have a little flick through? Well, let you see first. Let's have a look through. Here we go. So again, what I like is you've got obviously different tips, you've got your patterns, different ways of... Just gives you an idea. Again, it breaks it down. Um, there we go, different quilt designs that you can do. Oh, that'd be nice in that rainbow bundle, wouldn't it? Strips of tricks. There you go, some more there. Mmm, very nice. <gasps> the sun, nice rainbow bundle. There, so all these sort of designs, these would be beautiful, wouldn't they, with the... Uh, Shall I just uh, move this across? Look, if I put it on there, look at that. Oh, beautiful. I guess we keep flicking. I like this. Do you know what I want to do? It makes me want to turn around and actually read the books and be like, what's it saying here? Assembling the quilt top. Butterflies. It's lovely. That. Oh, look at that. Pretty beads. So again, it's again, the books are just full of uh, ideas that gives you inspiration. You've got detail and patterns at the back. Some people get a pattern first, then buy their uh, fabric for the pattern, or people buy the fabrics and then uh, find patterns that will work with it as well. So it's whichever way you want to work with that. That's a great price, that $15.99, that. Um, it's great. Loads of different uh, quilt designs in there as well, which is fabulous. Right, we're going to, uh, we've looked at our basics. So we're going to go across now to the other side of the room um, to see some more designer fabrics. Oh, we were having fun with these this morning, weren't we? Ooh, where do I start? <laughs> we're starting these ones, the Doll's House range. <gasps> These are lovely. How soft. These are from Art Gallery, these ones that you've got here, this bundle. You've got one, two, three, four, five different designs. We've bundled them all. So you're getting two and a half metres. This is all we have for this collection. Oh, aren't they gorgeous? Shall I open them up? You're getting half a metre in each. Beautiful, beautiful. Aren't they pretty? These would be lovely maybe if you were doing... Um, you're looking at doing a little girl's bedroom up, or if you were just looking, again, make a beautiful quilt out of these, wouldn't they? I'd open it upside down. <laughs> there we go. Oh, look at that. Look at the detailing on there. So, so pretty. Look at that. Again, it's nice and fresh, isn't it? So that's your whole bundle. So again, two and a half meters, and I'll show you that. So you're getting that one, and then you're obviously you're getting the others. Let me get close on those. Beautiful, fl nice floral display. I like the little toadstools. Are they toadstools or some mushrooms? And there we go. Right, we've got some images. So here we go. Oh, look at these for inspiration. You can make some little girls' clothes. Nice little hat for her, a little pinafore, nice little, um, do you, oh, you could make, do you know, you could make a lovely outfit for her, a little girl and her little dolly. A nice top as well. 
nice quilt. Oh, really, really feminine. That top you can see, we've got the fabric there. Um, let me. Ah, the fabric in the little girl's top. We've got that by the half meter. If you were going to make a top, you'd need more than half a meter in a bundle, wouldn't you? This one. There we go. You can do this one separately. This is available by the half meter. All of them now are, you can get separate. So you don't have to get them all. You can get them separate. So if you did want, if you're making a dress, let me show you what half a meter looks like, just so you know. Here we go. Oh, look at this. There we go. So look at that. It's half a meter. So obviously, if you were going to make something, if you're making a top, you might need to make. You'd need to get more. If you put multiple units in, they will come joined up. So two is one meter. Four is two meters. The great thing about art gallery fabric is that it's very, very soft. I know something I started. Um, it's great for making it for children or clothing. Lovely nice little top out of that. It's lovely. So we've done that one. There we go. Now, we're going to do this one. This is in the other colourway. Oh, th those are little toadstools. Little girls, oh, little girls Easter dress. Oh, who wants to make Belle an Easter dress? Do you want to, Hannah? How cute. Do you know what would be really sweet? A little sundress with a little matching hat, wouldn't it? A little sun hat. Or you could make mother and daughter matching hats. Me and my little Belle wearing the same outfits. People do. I don't think I would. There we go. Oh, this is cute, isn't it? Let's have a look at this one. So these are just so real sort of feminine, girly, girly patterns, aren't they? Um, you can make yourself, you don't have to make a little girl a dress out of it. You can make yourself a nice top, a uh, nice blouse. Like I say, they come in the half a metre. Um, have a look at that. That's gorgeous. Let me just hold it up a little bit more for you. Oh, so that's the art gallery petal. Dolls house range. Oh, it's so soft, like we say. Little shorts would be cute as well, wouldn't it? Little shorts. Who knows that? Little romper. Little oh, those little dungarees. <laughs> cute. And then obviously we've got this one here as well. This is nice. Have a look at that. I mean, again, we don't ha you don't have to make girls' clothes out of them if you didn't want to. Again, you can uh, use it for yourself. Use it for making toy making as well, because it is so soft. I would rub my face against it, but I know that the makeup would come off, and I don't think I'd be very popular. <laughs> oh, look at that. I love all Again, there's all the little pinks and things in there. Really pretty. And the one I opened up at the very beginning, that's at the bottom of the pile now. Here we go. I quite like that. It'd suit me. I'm trying to think of a nice dress. You could make yourself a sundress, couldn't you? It doesn't have to be children. At least, you know, you know, maybe, well, the chances of you making something out of this and seeing somebody wearing the same outfit, I would say, is quite slim. There we go. So now we're going to go complete contrast from the art gallery fabric. We are going to do the dashwood, which is this one here. Oh. <gasps> Look at this. So we've bundled this first of all. So this is the bundle that you're getting here. Let's have a look at that. So you're getting three meters here of fabric in total. Look at those bold patterns that you're getting in each one. It's bright, it's bold, it's striking. 
There you go, three meters of fabric there. The Dashwood Studio Flock Collection. So you can get it in the bundle. The designer, is it the designer from, uh, designer from Sheffield? Is that who you're going to see at the weekend, Hannah? Is that who you're going? Hannah's going to Sheffield at the weekend. I just thought she was going to see the designer from her here. Right, so you can get, you're getting all of these in this, this uh, collection. I've only seen this once before in F. Now, I'm just going to show you this one because this one is a bit different. This one is a panel. So whether you wanted to use it as a centerpiece. Look at that. Shall I step back here with it? Mm -hmm. Does that work? Yeah, look at the birds on there. I'll show you the birds close up. Little birdies. And there we go. Aren't they pretty? Should we try and uh, let's do the overhead? There we go. We like to look close at the birds. Feed the birds. Oh. Very limited on this panel, uh, Hannah's just told me. You can see why, to be fair. Look at that. So with this one, with a panel, you wouldn't obviously go chopping it up into different bits. You could, I suppose, but this is designed ideally if you were after exactly what it says, you know, if you're after a specific panel of something. Do check out on that panel because there's a lot of those that have just gone into the basket. So that's just for your uh, panel fabric, 60 centimetres. Ah, should we keep it laid out? Because you could do quilting with it or patchworking or a nice border with this here. There we go. I don't know what I'm doing now. I'm messing about, aren't I? There we go. Right. Do check out on that panel. Ooh, this one's in the range as well. You can see the same. What I like with all these is some sort of colourway in them all. <coughs> Just different designs, different colours. So this is the flock trees that you've got here in the dashwood. That's half a metre that you get in. That's lovely on its own, isn't it? <coughs> oh, do you know what, Hannah? That's a lovely idea. We just had a nice lampshade, cover your lampshade. Wouldn't have thought of lampshades. Ah, oh, we had lampshade kits, I believe. Really nice, that, isn't it? Lovely, lovely. Or oh, you could have, again, so it use it round goes use it as a border let me just uh, whoop, pop that there give it a nice border there so you've got like the lighter leaves so it kind of blends if you wanted that as a border so we've got that one Now, Hannah likes this next one. She likes the birds, the orange birds. <coughs> what would you use this one for, Hannah? Do you have an, a blouse? Ah, right. Hannah says this is one of those fabrics that she would buy and not necessarily know what she's going to use it for. It's beautiful. Do you know what I like on here? It's the detail on the birds, isn't it? It's beautiful. Like little floral designs on there. A nice, it'd be nice as a blouse, actually. So we lay this down so we can go in nice and close. The pattern on the birds are really, really cleverly done, aren't they? Oh, you could fussy cut them and applique on them if you wanted to. That's a great thing. Again, we're showing you bundles, we're showing you pieces of fabric. You can either add them into your stash, you can buy them if you think, oh, they look nice, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I'll get it in my stash and then decide at a later date. Because everybody works differently, don't they? Everyone has different ideas. And also everyone has different tastes, different likes. Lovely, isn't it? Nice, nice, nice. There we go. Now, the next one from the flock range. Oh, just to let you know, the panel, sorry, uh, there's only three left of these. So if you want one, I know uh, there's an... If you've got them in your basket, check them out because there is three. Only three of the panel left. That's your warning. Okay. Oh, this one's nice. I like this. 
Nice scarf some of these would make as well, wouldn't they? <gasps> Look at those colours. Again, you've got those bright yellows, the purple, um, the fuchsia pinks in there, the oranges. Quite geometric flowers, aren't they? I like those. Very nice. They're quite large prints, those, aren't they? So they'd be nice as a border. Nice centre of a block or something with a nice bouquet of flowers. What I'll do is I'll just fold this and then you can have a closer look. Ooh. Here we go. There you go, have a closer look. Oh, they're really nice, aren't they? Everything at the moment just screams spring and summer to me. It's close, it's nearly here. It's been a long few months, <laughs> but spring is nearly sprung, isn't it? So again, half a metre in that one. Uh, people are checking out on that one now. Now, let's have a look here. Oh, the panel, just to let you know, the panel's about to sell out as well. Oh, have a look at this one. Looks like little roses. Oh, that's lovely. That's, Hannah would like that in her house. She says scatter cushions. That'd be a nice one. Yeah, no, it'd be nice that just as a cushion, wouldn't it? Scattered against other colours. Oh, it'd look lovely on a grey sofa. Do you know what? I'm going to be a bit naughty. There you go. Look, there you go. That's how it'd look, Hannah, on your grey. Maybe the monotone bundle. Look at that. <gasps> Very like um, Art Deco, isn't it? Is that the word? There's a word on my... No. There we go. So we've got that one. And, oh, we've got the nice mint green here. Let me hold it the right way around. Look at that. Nice detailing again on there. Again, each piece is different. So again, it's what you would like it for if you're thinking, oh, do you know what? That'd look lovely as a cushion in my conservatory. Maybe you want some um, outdoor seating cushions. I know people each year, they always seem to have like themes, don't they? And if you go into some posh shops and things, they have like the colours of the year, don't they? Or the certain colours that, oh, do your garden and deck it out in like mint greens and things one year. Then the next year it's like yellows. So you could just change your garden furniture with this, couldn't you? Oh, the travel bag we saw earlier, that'd be nice as this. Uh, shall I get the bag off the wall? Hang on. This one. Oh, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? There we go. If you did strips of these fabrics, I don't know what I'm trying to <laughs> wrapping it around. Look at that. Oh, you could use it and um, make a bag from the bag boutique book. I mean, they've patched along as well, so you could get the bundle. And you can see there that they've patched along, haven't they? Different ones from the flock collection. It's entirely up to you. That's the thing, by getting something like a book, the book bundle book, gives you ideas, and then you've got your different fabrics and things, so you can... Uh, that bag is from the Bag Boutique book. So just pop that up. We saw that in the first show. Um, if you missed it, it's a great, great book. Um, full of all different designs, different ideas on what bags you can make and things. So really, we like it, don't we, Hannah? And then the last fabric in this collection, saved my favourite to the end. Look at that. I think it works, this colour on me. I'd make a nice dress, wouldn't it? Sundress. A jumpsuit, yes. Although it wouldn't be a short, short jumpsuit for me because I don't show anybody my legs. <laughs> I never have. I've, I go on holiday to boiling hot countries and I'm there in jeans. I, everyone thinks I live there because I'm that one that always wears clothes too warm. There we go. We're going to show you the still of the whole bundle. So you can get them separate or you can get them in the bundle. And at the moment, the bundle is the only way you can get the panel now because the panel's sold out. Um, so if you do want the panel, the only way you're going to get that is in the bundle. So you're getting the uh, three metres of uh, fabric plus the panel. 
Someone just wanted to know what the length of that panel was. Uh, oh, I should have a tape measure in my trolley. Is it what, this little one here? Right, this is going to be fun, Becky measuring. Just challenging me. Do we go inches? Yeah, we would, wouldn't we? So can I say some inches as well? Right, it is uh, about 44. 44 inches long. Turn that into centimetres. Oh, heck. <laughs> right. Uh, 112 centimetres. 60 centimetres wide. That was for you, Mandy. Thank you, Mandy. That panel, though, is now only available in the bundle. It's sold out on its own. There you go, there's the bundle. So you're getting three metres of fabric and you're getting the panel with that. So that's the only way you can get the panel. There you go. Lovely panel, isn't it? Very pretty. All those details in there. Uh, I would, though, check out on that bundle because there's been an influx of people since the panels uh, sold out. There has been an influx, so don't miss out on that. I think everybody else is liking all the bright, springy colours today, aren't they? There we go. Right, to mix in with this collection, we've done a bright bundle. This is that over there, isn't it? Right, let's get this bundle in. Now we can mix and match with this bundle as well. Have, oh, look at this. So this is the flock bold uh, fabric bundle that you've got here. So we've put in here some of our Macaui solids. So you're getting half a meter of each that we think would go nicely with some of these uh, bird fabrics. So let's have a look. So those would go nice together, wouldn't it? That would look nice. Of course, she went for fuchsia. Of course. There we go. So to show you that, so you've got, so there we go. You've got your flock bold fabric bundle, but obviously you might want to team it up. So that would work lovely together. That'd be nice for a bag, wouldn't it? Beach bag. Or mix and match with those two. Ooh, jazzy. Mixing up a little bit there with the yellows. The yellows matching on the yellow on the, the pink fabric. So it's picking up that detail. And for me, I thought, ooh, look at that. That matches that. Lovely. Flock small leaves is the uh, pink fabric. And your yellow is from that bundle. Uh, I'm just trying to have a look. Ooh, would that work? Yes, it would. There we go. Now I'm getting all this. Do you know what it's like? It's having fun, isn't it? It's like I'm having a nice colouring book or something here, just match, mix and match in my colours. And that's the thing when you get home as well, you can have a play. And sometimes this is why we say about having um, fabrics in your uh, stash, because you might, as I say, not necessarily know, but then when you order some more and get a selection, you can be like, oh, you know what? I can mix and match with that. I can make a nice little bag. Um, Scatter cushions, it, completely, it can completely change a room, can't it? Or something, you know, an outfit, you might have a nice little dress in this, make a purse to go with that or something. It's just, just it's been versatile, isn't it? I want to find something for the green, which would work with the green. Uh, no. Oh, the trees. I'm going, to say, I'm going to be completely honest. I would say no. Because that's just my... That's my uh, what would work? The trees with the pink, I think. There we go. Oh, yeah, that does. That's the thing. It's just having a little play around and see... But do you know what? You could, somebody could have looked at that with the other colours and gone, oh, actually, I like that. It's, it's your personal choice, really, isn't it? It's what you, what you like. Now, we've got one other bundle 
which would team with the flock collection, which is in front here. So I'll pop those over there. Those were your bold fabrics. And again, it's obviously not everybody wants bold. There'd be somebody sat at home going, if she mentions the word fuchsia or shows me fuchsia one more time. <laughs> this is your more um, nature naturally, you see. Well, that works straight away. I'll just show you the bundle that you're getting first. Here we go. So this is the flock nat uh, nature fabrics there. So if you were buying both bundles where you could get the panels, let me just lay this out again. So this is the flock bundle that um, you've got there. That's across the bottom there, the price. That's the only way you can get the panel now because the panel's sold out. Okay. And there you go. So again, you've got your nature ones. So you, again, you can mix and match. So, um, not as, some of them aren't as bright as the other ones in the other bundle. But again, each, each to their own, you can see. You're getting those blues in there. Ooh, biscuity tones. That, um, that fabric you like, Hannah, that would go nicely, wouldn't it? Yeah. Let's have a look. There she goes, straight for the... Start having a play again, we'll do that. That and that. Ooh, that's nice. That's a different one, isn't it? There you go. Mmm, quite mustard. It's the mustards, isn't it? Flock bird. You like that, don't you? That's the thing, again, it's having a play. It's thinking, oh, maybe you wouldn't necessarily think put them together. But when, it's only when you get them and you have a look and you go, oh, yeah, you know, actually. And you think of projects and things, what you could do, or you've got your books to inspire you at home, you've got different ideas. Um, a biscuit. What would we do with biscuit? Biscuit's quite... Work with quite a few, actually, the biscuit, because it's a neutral one, isn't it? There you go. It's nice, isn't it? Would that be too bland if I did that? Let me... Uh, slightly, I'm just going to show you this one as well. I mean, that would work more if that was a background, then you could maybe pop that, maybe applique a bit of it on. Each, each, you know what? It's each, each to their own, you know, where... It's that creative process, isn't it? If you've got a pattern already or you like to design your own. Oh, that one's snuck in there. You belong over there, mister. There we go. Oh, Christine's messaged in. Oh, Christine, it's Becky. Oh, thank you, Christine. I'm glad you said so. <clears throat> Nice to know. <laughs> Thank you for messaging in. That's a really nice message to say I'm doing great. Yes. Because I've not got the iPad on. I've got um, Spectrum Solid Fabric. The bundle, yeah. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Technology baffles me, like I've said. Ooh. Now we're going to do our last designer fabric bundle, which is the words. Now... We've bundled them all together. Let me pop them. Have we finished with these now? Can I pop? Oh, good. I don't want to be finished with them. There we go. Chris will be able to make them look pretty. Right. These are really, they're so different, these, aren't they? Um, I like the thing with words. These would make either really nice sort of trendy cushions. Uh, that one's quite a fun play one. Nice tablet holder as well, aren't they? So you're getting half a metre. I'll show you them all together, then I'll uh, split them up. So it's World Play Fabric Bundle, two and a half metres. Only launched this the other day. Do you know what? Something like this is different. As I say, you can use them to make tablet holders. It could, I would think, some of these, you could be sat thinking, what would I use that for? And then all of a sudden, you'll get them, and you'll, there'll be something that you suddenly go, ah, right. So that's your bundle. Let's separate them out so you can have a look at them. 
So we've got this one first of all. It's like a newspaper. This is quite a small print that you've got here. Word pl wordplay. The meaning of wordplay. There we go. That could be nice if you're making a cushion for like a study as well or something. An office, nice cushion, book covers, book, but book bag. Actually, no, I would say probably for a younger child, uh, one of those brighter ones would be a fun book bag. We've got, uh, we'll use the bigger, we'll show you the bigger font one now. So that's that one. Um, this one here, the bigger font. <clears throat> now, we've only got four metres of this one left in the company. This one flew out. It's very modern, this, isn't it? <laughs> Lots of different words on here with their meanings. So again, because it's got like scissors, design, things, that could be nice for your sewing room. You could make a nice, um, might want to use it to maybe make sort of like a pin cushion. You might want to make a cushion for your sewing room. Quilt. Does it say fidget there? Uh, we've got sew, mother, scissors, design, textile. So it is quite a design, an arty one, I would say. So again, it might be a nice one for the office. Uh, sorry, your sewing room. But again, because it's modern, it could make, again, if you've got a nicer, it's crumpet on there. Oh, there it is, crumpet. Looks there. Hannah's just said she's off to watch Pointless being filmed next week. <laughs> Makes her think of that. Why did I, for some reason, I'm not surprised that you're going to watch that be filmed. <laughs> I like that. Um, what's the man called? Richard. Yeah. The tall one, yeah. Oh, you've got to try and get a photograph with them afterwards. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so Hannah, in Hannah's, these are Hannah's words, oh, and Hannah says this fabric makes her think of game shows. So maybe you like game shows, you might want to <laughs> make a cushion out of that. I look at that and go crumpet, I've not had one of those for years, well, for a while anyway. <sighs> Quilt, fidget, mother, sew, thread. Can't read that word. Quilt. What's that one say? De hole. Uh, needle, pin, sew. So many author. Very, very limited on that one. It's, do you know what? It's, again, it's an unusual fabric, isn't it? It's something different. Um, and again, you get half a metre of that. Dictionary text fabric in white from wordplay range. Do you, you, do, you do have like that reading on the screen. Oh, was, there's certain words I go to read and go, oh, I can't pronounce that. Reading was never a... Strong forte of mine. Gosh, I once did a job where I had to read auto cue. Oh, yes, that was fun. <laughs> trying to keep up with it, trying to read. I was like, what does that word say? Uh, I can't read that, I'll say that. Right, which one should we do now? Should we do this, this bright one here? This one is what I was on about for like a children's book bag. <coughs> it's fun. I can't remember, I used to have a book bag. No, Belle doesn't know a letter. So imagine it would be, you could actually just make, a, you could actually mount it or make it onto a cushion where you could teach a, little, a child. <coughs> yep, the learning letter. She likes the books already. She's only little and she holds the books. I was terrible at reading and never read. No, she can't speak yet. She's only little still. Well, she started to make, say noise as like mama, dada. And oh gosh, it sounds like, but I think it's all gone. <laughs> I don't know where she's got that from. <laughs> so yeah, you've got this one here. That one is the text fabric in the multi um, from Wordplay as well. So it's nice, bright colours. It's fun, that. So we could, as I say, you make a nice... Do you know what? For a child, you could actually make a little children's blouse out, a little shirt. Grandkids. It's just something fun, isn't it? Something, again, different that you think... You'll suddenly get it and you'll be like, ah, I know the perfect for that. Beanbag, actually. Beanbag for children's um, bedroom 
or ch some children have their own little offices, don't they? Do you say changing mat? Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Or you could actually have it as, yeah, play mat as well. Mount it, quilt it for children. Little quilt. That one's cute. Nice bright colours. Right, which one's next? This one. Right. Oh. It's like creates a stripe, doesn't it? Oh, wow, look at that. All the numbers on there. Again, these are all sort of, they can be a bit quirky, these as well, can't they? You know, they can be used for different things. Number fabric. There we go. Even if you just did the plain colours and then added this into it as well. Again, oh, that just happens to be there. There you go. And the fuchsia's in again. That actually was just a... Oh, Christine, I've had a message from you. Thank you. Ah, oh, my eldest daughter is a Becky. Ah, oh, so welcome to the sewing quarter. Crafty Christine again. Ah, oh, thank you, Christine. Um, oh, and your eldest daughter is a Becky. See, all the best people are called Becky. Uh, thank you for your message, Christine. It's nice there. Nicola from South Yorkshire. Great show, Becky. Keep up the good work. Love, Nicola. Oh, thank you. It's really nice to get your messages in. Thank you so much. I was very nervous, very scared. I thought, if you don't like me, I need to feed Belle. <laughs> it's great because I leave her when she's asleep. So when I go home, I'll get home for early afternoon and I'll be back. She won't sleep for that long. She was up at, say, I think I said earlier, 20 past five, she was awake. She doesn't, I didn't get the sleeper. She doesn't sleep. She'll do a few hours, then she'll wake up. She wants to play all the time. It's been 11 months of no sleep. Four hours is the maximum I've had. <laughs> Always fun indeed. So here we go. This one's fun as well. Look at this. I like all the little pictures, the little pair, the umbrellas, the wool, kite. Little heart. Do you know what? It's just unusual. You're not going to see this everywhere, are you? Maybe you don't have a quilt shop or a fabric shop near you. Something like this would be perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to show you the bundle as a whole. So there we go. You can get that. So that's your word play bundle that you've got there. 34.99. That's two and a half meters. Now I've moved. I've just uh, bought that over here because we can mix that mix and match. Right. Just to let you know, uh, I'm going to do a stock update on the rainbow bundle. Here, have a look at this one. Right, less than 20 of these now available. The rainbow bundle is really popular. As I say, you're getting all your favourite colours in here, um, all your sort of colour spectrums in there from your purples, your oranges, your uh, different blues, your emeralds, your fuchsias, your yellows, and your red in there as well. I need to move, put the red and orange. Let's see. Oh, we should put them in the rainbow order. What was it? Richard of York gave battle in vain. And I don't know where the pink goes. <laughs> Mixing it up. See, aren't you impressed that I know the alpha, the, the rainbow? <laughs> oh, I love it. As I'm talking about Richard of York gave battle in vain. Who is it who emailed him? Lynn said that uh, I'd fit in well with everyone at the same quarter because they're a mad bunch. <laughs> and there's me going on about a rhyme I learned at primary school. It's like with the planets. My very easy method just shows us nine planets. And that's Mercury. I'm not going. <laughs> it does if you go through it. <laughs> we don't need to learn about planets. Right, so, you can, so you're getting all of these and you're getting the pink. The pink doesn't fit in the rhyme. How can we fit it in? Richard of York gave battle in vain. I'm trying to think of a word that begins with P. <laughs> 
Perfect. Richard of York gave battle in vain perfect. No. We'll pop it down there anyway. Yes, when Belle goes to school, I'll be asking her when they teach her the right rainbow rhyme, I'll be getting her to ask, where does pink fit in? <laughs> She'll be that child that they go, oh, no. <laughs> uh, do check out on this one, because we are um, getting uh, 13 of these bundles left. Again, as well, just going back to the colours, you can see, again, when you, the red and the orange are next to each other, they stand up, but again, you can see sort of the because the, there's so many different types of orange, so many different types of red, but I would say it's kind of like your real red, your real orange, if that makes sense. Right, let's have a look at this. So, uh, here we go. We'll just show you the still again of the rainbow. So those are all the different colours that you've got in here. Now, I've got the wordplay. This is your bundle of all your wordplay. And again, this will work beautifully with the... You see, this is the thing, the rainbow fabric's very, very versatile. Let's have a look. So, for example, I've just picked up the first one because it's red. How nice do they look together? You could even do a bit of patchwork. You could use... Because all these colours do go together because of the rainbow. You could, as I say, quilt it all together. Do a nice children's quilt. There you go. If you had the 680 machine, you can do lettering as well. So you could put their name across it. Uh, so we've got that. That's just uh, this one here. Let's give us, go for a nice bright blue. There we go. Oh, I know, blue and orange. Don't they look lovely together? Oh, I like blue and orange. Oh. I wouldn't wear that as an outfit. It's quite garish. So I wouldn't wear that in orange trousers and a blue top. Cheryl Cole did once, though, didn't she? She wore bright orange trousers. Yeah, I do like the blue. I am wearing blue. It, to be fair, I like that, that blue and that fuchsia pink. They're my colours. So next time I'm in, I'll probably have fuchsia pink on. Or there's a blue pink top I've got. It depends if I've managed to lose any more baby weight because I've... <laughs> Still got a stash of clothes that can't fit. Everything's loose at the minute. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Uh, and again, something like, well, this one here, you can just have a lot of fun with, really, this coloured one. Yeah, you're going to have so much fun with this one. Yeah, look at those. It's again, it's tailoring it's how you want, but I think what this shows is what we're using the wording was just showing that the rainbow bundle, you will get so much use from it. There's always going to be somebody's favourite colour in there. It's like if you have got grandchildren or children yourself, um, you know, you could show them the, the bundle, you show them the colours and say, which one would you like? One will go for, guaranteed one will go for one, one will go for the other. And even if they go for the same, you've got enough. Right, leave that there. Okay, so uh, just one more time, because the rainbow bundle has been extremely popular today. Uh, five metres of fabric that you're getting. And you're getting all the colours. You're getting your reds, your blues, your... Oh, I've took it out of sync now. Red, blues, orange, greens, blues, yellows, purples and pinks in there. Nearly on single figures for that one. Do check out on that one as well. It's absolutely lovely. Fabulous. Now, we've got the monotone, which is a complete contrast, but again, it works with the bright colours if you wanted. Or I'm going to leave the bright colours and say, do you know what, if you don't want the bright colours, you could be like, I've got loads of bright colours, I want something more monotone, monochrome, not monotone, as it says on the screen. You've got your white in there, you've got your spots... There you go, you've got your spots in there, you've got your greys, your blacks. I think it was a I was saying about someone told me I was monotone once. I think it was a gentleman on, a, on the ship once. He said, oh, you're very monotone. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a compliment. I was having to read something out that was very hard. Right, we have a wander back over here. We've got one bon bundle, bundle that we haven't, sh haven't shown you. And it's lovely. It's the Doll's House complimentary here. Look at these colours. P 
pinks and greys. And we've learned this morning that we like these colours. I like these colours as well. Oh, these are beautiful. You've got two planes and then you've got obviously your patterns on them as well. So we put that in your doll's house complimentary fabric bundle, uh, put it in your doll's house range. That's your art gallery. This one here, have a look. <gasps> now, this is a game changer, isn't it? Oh, they look lovely. Obviously, you can buy them all. Um, you can buy them all separately. You can buy them in the bundle as well. Look at that. I mean, straight away, the way they've even been set up, doesn't that plain grey work beautifully with that fabric? Did you make it? Oh, I love it. It's, it's like you've known, Hannah. This is all my favourite colours. Those would be nice. I could jazz up my lounge a bit. No, it's my bedroom that's just grey. I could do with a few more colours in my bedroom. Nice pinks. Nice. Should we have a little mix and match? I've been right. Ooh, right now then. Da, da, da. Straight away. I feel like I should be on. It's like countdown clock going. Do, 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 do. Yeah. I like countdown. I'd be awful on that, though. Right, so straight away I've mixed and matched here. We've got this lovely collection here. Look at that. Oh, really fresh, isn't it? You can get these fabrics by the half metre or you can buy them in the bundle as well, the Doll's House complimentary bundle. We just put the bundle together. And we look at this. Nice grey. That's pretty, isn't it? And also, that would work. You see, what a nice, for example, with the grey. That would work with like, that. It would work with that. Uh, it would work. In fact, it would work with all of them in this bundle. Wouldn't it? Oh, Hannah does English paper piecing, you see. And she said, this is good fabric for that because you pick out small pieces. And you've also cut the designs on them. Oh, you'll have to tell me about English paper piecing. That sounds interesting. See, that works nicely as well. I think it's just nice the fact that we've got bundles, you've got selections together, and again, it's you can mix and match. You, it's like for me, I, I like the, well, I like the greys and the pinks. I've seen them, but yet straight away, you put them with other fabrics and go, oh, they, they work well together. And yeah, it's more of a busier one. That's Right, the most popular bundle this hour, apart from the rainbow one, has been the block, the flock range. Now I shall show that one again. This is the only way you can get the uh, panel piece now, because the panel on its own has sold out. There we go, waft that down there. Woo! There we go. So this is the only way you can get now. The panel. And we've put together a bundle of everything in that range. There we go. So this one has been the most, uh, apart from the rainbow, and this has been the next popular one. We've got gorgeous, gorgeous pieces here. Let's lay them out. I don't know if that's a handy, helpful <laughs> way. There we go. Oh, I look really proud of myself. Like, mm, constant, yeah. Do you know I am though? Because it's like, I'm a lady on a mission today. I'm like, right, what are we doing? Let's mix it up. It's just a nice collection. They just all work lovely, don't they? So once you get it home, so you'll be able to start having a nice play with it. Mix it in with things that you already have with it. And you've got, obviously, there's the plain solid bundles. These work well. Um, the witch bundle, this one here, where my hand was edging towards. You see straight away, let's uh, place your bets on what I'm going for. 
So we've got the flop. See, again, straight away, that works with that. In fact, I'm going to be different. Instead of the yellow, that blue would work on that one as well. Very nice, actually. I'll hold that one up. Nice, isn't it? So again, uh, the first time I showed it, I saw that with the yellow. So the more, so the more you look at them, the more you go, oh, actually, just pop that with that. So that's the two bundles there. So that's your Dashwood Studio flock collection. And then obviously you've got your block ones as well. The other block bundle that we put together, which was, the, if you didn't like the bold one, which is the more, uh, it's the na nature one we've called it. Nature, uh, at home with nature. Let me move you out the way. Here we go. We've got this one as well. Just have another. That's just going across the bottom there. The flock natural um, nature fabric bundle there. Two meters of that you get in. No half a meter in each. Uh, that will go nicely with that, wouldn't it? Everyone's thinking she'll pick something pink, didn't they? Nice, isn't it? So that fabric on its own, um, you can get as well. So there you go, you've got a nice selection there of different fabrics that you can add, as I say, into your stash. It could be that you've thought, oh, do you know what, I'm going to go and make something right away. It could be that you've got a book with an idea and you think, oh, I'm going to do that. Or you might like the fabric and think, one day I will think of something that I can make with it. But it's just having those pieces of the fabrics when we offer them. It's just having them in your collection ready for when you, when you need them. Uh, coming up in the next hour, Angie's back. Um, we've got the... Um, Oh, we've got a 680 sewing machine bundle uh, that we've been talking about earlier. Um, and we've also got free motion uh, with Angie. We've got a great demonstration coming up for you as well. So that's all coming up in the next hour. Um, she's going to be showing as well um, a different artwork that, and talking to her own artwork as well. So it's going to be really, really great. So all I'd say is grab yourself a quick drink. I'll see you in a couple of minutes time. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Make sure you join us on Friday the 23rd of February when we'll be taking a tour of some of our favourite quilt kits. Along the way, we'll stop to admire the stunning Cathedral Windows quilt kit made with glorious K-Facet fabric. For a cute and cuddly quilt, Pam Lintot's teddy bear quilt never fails to warm our hearts. Liberty lovers will adore Alice Caroline's Tree of Life, while Anna Maria Horner's Travelling Blooms kit is a fabric lover's delight. All of these quilt kits come complete with the fabric you need to make the quilt top, making them perfect for yourself or to give as a quality gift. So tune in for these tempting treats and more. Friday the 23rd of February at 11am only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78, Sky Channel 678. Simply Sewing is a magazine for dressmakers and home sewists who are passionate about fabrics and love to sew with stylish patterns. Each issue is packed with technical know-how, templates and easy to follow instructions to sew yourself quick wardrobe updates, accessories, plushy toys, gifts, bags and more. Plus, each issue comes with a free dress pattern from our expanding trend-led collection. We're proudly flying the flag for contemporary sewing with stylish patterns and beautiful photography to inspire sewists across the globe at every level. Tune in on Friday 23rd of February for an hour of Sashko stitching with Jennifer Taylor. Originally a traditional Japanese technique for mending clothes, Sashko uses simple running stitch to create fascinating, intricate patterns. We have everything you need in this hour. From the complete Sashko starter kit to books, templates and accessories will have you stitching in no time. As well as teaching us the technique, Jennifer will be showing us how to apply it to a sewing room storage set. So join us and learn something new on Friday the 23rd of February at 8am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. Did you know there are multiple ways you can contact us even if it's just to ask a question? Our friendly team are always on standby. 
You can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433, email us at help at com. visit our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. Love Patchwork and Quilting is the best-selling modern quilting magazine that shares your passion for fabric. We publish 13 times a year, featuring must-make projects, essential techniques, interviews, news and reviews from the world of modern quilting. Every issue also comes with a free gift. Join Sewing Quarter at the Sewing for Pleasure show this March. From Thursday the 15th to Sunday the 18th, the NEC in Birmingham is transformed into Fabric Heaven, where you can enjoy sewing, quilting, patchwork and dressmaking with the experts. Find the Sewing Quarter team on stand H06. And with the chance to meet our guest designers as well as presenters Natasha and me, John, we'll have live demonstrations for you to enjoy plus special show prices on exciting product. Snap up your tickets and bring a friend for free with our two-for-one ticket code exclusive to Sewing Quarter. Quote the code EV26 at www.sewingshow.co.uk and you can get two-for-one prices on adults and seniors for one, two and three-day tickets. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest. Sewing Quarter is the UK's first TV channel dedicated to sewing and quilting. On air and behind the scenes, our team of top industry experts work hard to bring you tons of exciting projects. Whether you're into dressmaking, bag making, piecing, patchworking or quilting, you'll learn something new every day from our talented guest designers and fabulous presenters. Our online shop is packed with tools, haberdashery essentials and fabulous fabrics from simple solids to designer gems. And with our 30 day money back guarantee and single daily postage charge, you can shop with confidence. So tune in daily on Freeview 78, Sky Channel 678 and shop online at sewingquarter.com. Welcome back to the Sewing Quarter. It's with me, Becky Bleeds, today. Uh, joining me in this next hour, we've got the fabulous Andrews back for some free motion uh, stitching. Free, yeah. We've got a bit of all sorts <laughs> happening in this hour. I'm looking over. I know she's got us, brought some of her own work in. We've got a great introduction. Um, so we can start. Show. Let's first of all, um, I'll just show you the starter pack that you can get today. So we've bundled it all together. So it's the free motion starter bundle. Um, so you've got your stitch and tear. You've got some water uh, soluble stabilizer, which we'll explain about later. You're not, it's a great demo that. Uh, we've got your, we've got another stabilizer there. We've got your fabric uh, pen, pencil, and then you've got your refillable uh, leads as well, which come with that. So everything to get yourself going with your free motion. Um, so that's going to be, that's coming up today. So we put that together because pe uh, for people who are starting out, um, we've also bundled that with the machine as well. We've got uh, the fabulous um, sewing machine that we're doing today. We've talked a lot about it already. Um, it's the 680 sewing machine bundle. Uh, with um, You're getting these bits free with it as well. So you've got the... So you're making a saving today of 55.68. We'll be going through with that sewing machine. Angie was saying before how amazing it is. Uh, from what I know, I was amazed at all the different buttons and gadgets that you get on there as well. So as well as your starter bundle in that, 
I can also see that you're getting a book. Now, this is a brand new book that we've got today. And we're going to be using that with Andrew. It's a uh, block designs in it. And let me go into... So in here, there's designs for your uh, free motion quilting blocks and also for your... Um, Angie will show it how she's used it as well on the sewing machine as well. Uh, so it's a brand new book. So we've got loads and loads of different designs in there for you, which is perfect. Those are the uh, sewing machine ones. Here we go. So we've got 75. There we go. So you've got all the different details in there. Lots and lots of free motion quilting designs in there. The free motion machine. I'm going to take this with me over to Angie. So it's brand new today, that popular already. There's people straight away in for that one. So yeah, so I'll bring that one over. I like the, um, it's one of the ring, the ring bags so you can lay it flat, can't you, in your workroom without it closing up or anything like that. So we've got that. Are we going to Angie yet or are we staying here? Oh, bundles first. Right, so we've got some beautiful bundles here. Now, let's go to this bundle first. Oh, fuchsia pink. Lots of different colours in these bundles. So this is your sherbet dip. I like that name, your sherbet dip fabric uh, bundle. So you've got lots of different colours in there so you can experiment there. They work beautifully together. And this is the bundle that is also with the sewing machine. So you'll be getting this with the sewing machine. Beautiful colours, so you get that for free. So that's your sherbet dip fabric. Then you've got your one down here at the front. Isn't that pretty? This is the Evening Meadow. Ooh. Whether you use these for your um, machine embroidery or whether you use them just again for your stash. Beautiful colours in there. And I'll go to this one here as well. We've got this bundle. So we've got four bundles. We've got this next one here. Nice crisp white in there as well. Got the reds and the blues. Nicely nautical, this one's called. Oh, very nice. Nicely nautical. Two and a half metres you're getting in total with that one. And then the last one. Man's Hannah of Mojitos, she says. It's not even 12 o'clock. It's called Lucky Clover. <laughs> Lucky Clover, so you've got some gorgeous colours and tones in there as well. Oh, St. Patrick's Day coming up, uh, Angie's just said. That'd be great. Now, we mentioned um, earlier different stabilisers in our starter bundle. Some of you will not know uh, what we are talking about. We'll make it clearer later um, about them, but I'm just going to run through them for those that do know so they can start checking them out on their own. So we've got the, this one here. So this is our fabric stabiliser, the water soluble. We're going to be, Angie's going to be showing this later. I saw before, it fascinates me. It is available for those of you that know about it and are already doing your machine embroidery and you're already aware. So you can start checking that out there. So we'll be showing that a little bit later. Stitch and tear as well, which is here. Again, we'll be showing you, will we show, are we demoing this? We'll be talking about it anyway, stitch and tear, we'll be talking about it. Nice chap on the front there. Roger, do you call him? You love the man. Oh, I don't know. She says she doesn't know this man, but she, Hannah thinks he's very attractive. And she says when you buy it, you get that picture free of the man. He looks like somebody I know. Oh, I will do. He looks a bit from the 80s, doesn't he? <laughs> He's a model. Mm. You'll have to try and find his name out, find him on Instagram. <laughs> right, and then the last one <coughs> that we've got here is your um, Visaline that you've got here as well. Solo fleece embroidery backer here. So those are available now. So those of you that know about them, but we will be talking in this hour about all those as well. Okay. 
right, let's go, because I'm like a little eager child. I'm like, I need to get across it. I'm going to take my book. I'm going to learn with Andrew. Oh, Andrew's got her book here uh -huh. as well. Hello again. <laughs> yeah. Are you OK? Yes, yeah, good. Now, we've gone from quilting in the second hour to free motion sewing now. Free motion embroidery, yes. Embroidery. Yeah. Yeah. So, Tell um, me more. Yeah. Uh, yes, when I was asked to do a free motion embroidery <laughs> show, we've been talking about doing this for about over a year right. since we first started. Um, so it's nice to be doing something with it. But um, I'm going to be starting right from basics. Okay, that's good for me. Um, I like that. And talking about free motion embroidery and free motion quilting. Okay. Different things. Right. You know, so people get a bit confused. And um, just try and sort of, if you've never done any, hopefully it'll give you a few tips and starters to get yeah. started. Um, so run Ooh. you through th some things that I run through when I teach free motion yeah. embroidery. Um, and then some tips of carrying it through to your quilting. Because as I say, I started with embroidery yeah. and moved into quilting. So it does all sort of play into oh, okay. each other. Um, We're just going to have a quick look at your work because you brought some of your work in. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Some people who watch won't know that this is your work that you bought in. So Some we'll people a... might recognise a couple of pieces. I used to write for um, the Embroiderers Guild magazine Stitch oh, a number write? of years ago. So um, the Budlier and I think the Hydrangea were in a kit form. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so, uh, yeah, I designed them for that. But... Uh, I'm using them today to demonstrate how you can put some of these techniques yeah. into practice because I think that's what people struggle with. Yeah. They, they get that they can sort of draw with stitch and oh, doodle yeah. with stitch, but then it's how to apply it. Yes, yeah. so what hopefully, to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and the first time we're bringing this, um, this book okay. is new to air. Yeah. So um, what's quite nice about this, when I looked through it, um, it was a bit, I was a bit surprised because it's... Um, we're doing a free motion embroidery hour, yeah. but it's got a lot of quilting inspiration in it. But it's great because it's both. So in the centre of the book, which I'd completely missed the first time I flicked through it, in the centre of the book are some more sort of free for right, what yeah. I would class as free motion embroidery. Okay. Um, so they're more ah, sort like of that. hand, and I've done a couple of samples there. Yeah. Um, stitched them out with using some applique. So these they're are more nice. like free sketches. Yeah. Um, and there's a, a sort of about eight pages in the centre of these. But then, like you say, the book is fabulous for quilting wow, inspiration. Yeah, it's got... And especially, um, there's even some ones with straight lines that if you've got, um, if you're a Westerly Ruler fan, yeah. like me, then you can apply some of these designs, you know, with your ruler work as well. So right. even like this with curves and straight lines. Yeah. Um, as you say, it lies nice and flat, so you can oh, it won't be place it, yeah. or you can have it flat on the on the table next just, to you. We're just going to have a look at some of your work that you've done in the book here. We're yeah, have from a the book. Up yeah. on there. Look at those. So those are a few of the patterns that are in this book. So we've got sort of the lovely teapot and yeah. the um, the flower there with the nice centre and the leaf and this rose sort of design. So I just took those four. And literally, these could be like little six inch blocks. Yeah. Or you could make, you know, you could do a whole quilt. Imagine a whole quilt with teapots could, oh, wow, with all different cute, colours on it? and things. That they'd just be like really, really cute. So it's a different way of thinking about doing yeah. it. You can work with plain fabrics, but put your own little designs ah. on the top. So how have you got that onto there? Have you traced from that? I'll come to that. Ah, yeah. right. Actually, that's when you said about stitch and tear. So that's the one I did. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is setting up for free motion embroidery. If I can show you this, um, this is a, a tool that I use, I like that. a design I did um, for my free motion embroidery workshops. And it shows you that right from just doodling with stitch, so all the black line work is just straight line. That's you don't amazing. Need, you don't need a fancy machine, um, just straight line. But I do use zigzag as well, which I'm going to show you. Some of it's applique, um, some of it I've um, coloured in with, if you've got fabric pens wow, at home, yeah. um, a little bit of um, hand embroidery. Um, so, you know, you can play around with how you can embellish with free motion embroidery. So um, that will give us a, a starter. Oh. We've got, just so you know, a starter kit um, yeah. with some of the pieces, some of the um, tools that you'll be tools. using today. Well, I thought um, it'd be really nice to bundle some of those things together because yeah. there's some staple sort of hoop sizes that I always um, use. Right. So should we talk about hoops first? Is that because this is we've yeah, got a let's bundle, do the haven't hoops. we? We've got a bundle of the hoops. Yeah, we've got a bundle. We can show that. That's yeah. A, yeah. So um, this we've got here um, a six, eight, and ten inch. Yeah. I think that we've bundled together, 
Um, ah, there you go, we've got that. Yeah. So I'll come on to um, the reasons, obviously, over the hour, why yeah. we use the different sizes and why they're good. The six inch is particularly good for using with solubles, which we'll um, come on to in the second part of the hour. The eight inch is kind of my staple that I is always that the go one you to. Go for? Yeah. Um, so if you haven't got a huge machine either, you find that when you're using an eight inch and moving it around, um, it's a really good size to work with. The 10 inch, if you have a normal size machine, it can start hitting the throat of the yeah. machine. And I know that you can turn it around, but yeah, if you're but in you flow think, yeah. and you're drawing something. So, um, but it is good sometimes, like obviously I did this design, yeah. um, you know, to be used in a 10 inch hoop. Or you can use them to mount your work after you as well and just so, make pretty Because I'm a complete pictures. beginner, would you advise getting the hoop set and the starter set? Is that what's a good idea to get? So you've got your hoops and your Are the strong. hoops separate to the, um, the other? I wasn't sure, the hoops... Hoops are one set, oh, so if okay. you get that yeah. uh, as a bundle, and then and you then get you've the got starter the stabilizers yeah. and, and pens and things, yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's a handy little set together. That's quite good actually if they're separate because you may already have some of the pens, or yeah. you may already have hoops, hoops. so yeah. you can so choose it's a good... what what you like. The yeah. other tip when choosing hoops, um, different to if you're a hand embroiderer, okay, is because um, hand embroidery hoops are quite thick. Right. And you want to find hoops that are as narrow here as possible. Okay. Purely because you're going to be putting them underneath the foot. Ah, uh, yes, so you don't want and them to. And that, that's in the normal raised position, but on a lot of machines, you won't, some of you won't realise, if you push it even further up, your presser foot lifter at the back, that's up, that's down. But there is another level. Right. It's, it's basically for when you're going over, you know, with thick jeans. If you turn yes. your jeans up, oh, you, you yeah. can never get it under. No. Some Because you have to press that quite hard. Oh, you may right. not realise you can lift your presser foot even higher. Yeah. Uh, but obviously your your hoop has got to fit under you want, there. Yeah, so, so you don't want them too uh, high. That's always a, um, a bit of an annoyance when you get home and you, 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 you can't, can't get, get it on. You, you have like, to take oh, the foot no. off to put yeah. the hoop in. <laughs> you know, so just be aware of that when you're choosing hoops. So these are, are nice and narrow, but a nice selection of sizes. Yeah. Okay. So um, then you'll need a free motion embroidery foot or several names, free motion embroidery, a darning foot, because originally this foot was designed for darning holes, basically. Oh, right. Um, so when we had holes in clothes, we would have stitched backwards and forwards over the hole. Right, we're just going to have a quick look to, at the foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stitched over, a, you know, to, to mend things. It was, or, you know, putting patches yeah. over things. So they can be called a darning foot, free motion embroidery foot. Uh -huh. And you can get them open-toed, closed-toed, clear like this one. So that yeah. you can, it's closed, but you can see. So you've got good vis visibility. Right. This is our 680 yeah. um, sewing machine that comes uh, with this foot. So we've got a bundle for that today. Um, and you're getting the free book with that. But lots of machines uh, might already have this foot. So do have a look with what you've got as well. Yeah. Now, can you do it without the foot? You can. You some, can. Some people, um, especially with older machines, they will just take everything off and okay. just have the needle. Um, you have no protection. Right. So it's advisable. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. and, and, and the thing of the foot is that it's actually, um, it's helping clamp the fabric occasionally right, yeah. to keep it sort of flat. Okay, um, yeah. But, you know, it's a personal choice. Um, some machines don't like it either. No. So older machines are probably designed to have done it, but some modern machines are designed to be used to, with yeah. the foot. <laughs> We've got so the foot, so apparently uh, we do have some on the website, so if you did need one, we, you yeah. can have a look on our website The 680 as well. comes with the free motion darning foot, but yeah. it also comes with free motion quilting feet as well, which right. sits a bit higher to allow for the wadding yeah. and things like that. Right. So there's a great selection of free motion feet with the 680 that you get, you know, as I said, that come with the, with the machine itself. So, um, well, I'll get started because I've got so yeah, much to show. Yeah, I don't really know where to start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just so people <laughs> know, people have, start, people have already checked out on the 680 bundle. Um, so we've now got, we're now in single figures of the sewing machine. And we've also, what else was it? The less, oh, less than five of the hoop bundles left. And the book's oh. going as well. <laughs> so it's all going, um, going, all go, go, go. Going well. <laughs> so. Um, so you um, can take your hoop apart oh, right. um, oh. so you just undo the screw there and it loosens the inner okay. band out um, some people like to bind oh I've have you seen, seen that them bound? yes I've um, always wondered what they I've never bound mine no um, some people do it it's it's um it does 
fabric can slip sometimes oh, between yeah. the wood and I think it gives it a bit more a bit grip, more, more grip but right. I've never felt it necessary and I've, I've done quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so it's a personal choice yeah. if you want to. Um, the way we put the fabric in the hoop is opposite, the opposite way to free motion, uh, uh, sorry, hand embroidery. Yeah. But the way I remember it is the bit with the screw I put screw. down on the table, on the ta okay. then put the fabric over and then pop the middle in. And that gives us um, a dish, oh, if you nice. like. Yeah. So if you're doing hand embroidery, you'd use the drum side yeah. to stitch on. But we're using it this way up. This is the, the, the front right. of our work. Okay, so, so we pop opposite. that in and then I have bought a screwdriver. Yes, I'm oh, sorry. Right. A little and then screwdriver we can, in there. Yeah, tighten that because I'll be opening these up. Yeah. So we keep that nice and taut. And this is the first thing, really, with free motion embroidery, you will always need to support your fabric in some way. Right, okay. So it either has to be in a hoop or with different stabilizers. Yeah. So that's why we're talking about different stabilizers. Um, just to show you this piece, when I wor worked on this piece, I didn't actually, you don't always want to work in a hoop. Okay, yeah. You could have delicate fabrics. Yes. You right. could be free motion embroidering on fur or leather yeah. or, you know, difficult um, piled velvet fabrics. Oh, right, yeah. And they'd be difficult to get oh, in yeah, a hoop. Oh, yeah, that would be the velvet. So, um, but you still, a machine doesn't like a single layer of fabric. No, you need, right. So it needs support and it needs to be sort of kept taut. So when I was working on, on this piece, I've used um, an iron-on stabiliser here but it doesn't have to be nowadays yeah. I just tend to use stitch and tear yeah so um, we'll come on to kit. that you yeah. can just literally put a piece of stitch and tear in your piece of fabric and go right. because it's given it that that stability um, but you can see if you just it stops you the amount of stitching you do the fabric can pucker yeah and so this is keeping everything nice and taut either stabilised or in a hoop will keep everything nice and flat right. and taut okay so uh, you fitted your foot to your machine uh, obviously look at your manual of how to do that yeah. often the, the the feet have got a little bar at the top I don't know if the ca camera can pick that up Let's and and you must it. ensure oh, you must ensure it sits above the needle bar if I turn that down you can see the bars staying up there but that has to stay above the needle bar because that's what's going to help the foot bounce up oh, and right. down okay right right so feet dogs are down so find on your machine where to lower the feed dogs. Okay. On this machine, there's a little, the side? a little switch at the side. Oh, a switch? Yeah. Not a screw or anything. You know, <laughs> like a little, a little button. And um, if you don't have a drop feed, you may have a plate that goes over the top. If you don't have either of those, just set all your settings to zero. To zero. Zero okay. length, zero oh, width. All right. And, you know, still have a go. And so we put the fabric underneath. And what I'm going to do initially is lower the foot, lower the foot don't and you? I'm going to put the needle down and pull the needle back up and then lift the foot again. And now I'm going to pull up my bottom thread. Pull up your bottom thread. Yeah. So you pull up both threads. Ah, right. If you can determine which end is. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you need both threads to the top and then lower the foot again. And we're just going to do, if I can find the foot pedal we're just going to do a couple are you of using stitches. is it bobbin fill on the bottom um yeah if you're doing embroidery uh, for quilting i never use bobbin fill but yeah. if it's for an embroidery i can show you on the back of here um you don't really want to be wasting all your precious yeah um threads yeah <laughs> so a bobbin fill is quite good and it comes in white or black yeah. and just use the one we're closest getting that back in stock we've sold out at yeah. the moment but we are currently it will be back in stock soon but it's uh, it's quite useful for embroidery because yeah. then you're not wasting all your lovely colored thread um and then i tend to just you might want to with, with it being a white or a black just loosen off your top tension oh right to, okay to have more of your colored thread showing if you don't want the bottom thread to show um, and then just don't be scared. Um, just you want a little bit of speed. This is quite difficult to do ah. stood up. This is why we've not done it for yes, a year. Yes, I was going to say you need to be sat down. <laughs> I've, got, um, I've not got good hips, you see. I've got arthritic hips, so I can't do it for long stood up, but we'll give it a go. Um, hold on to those threads yeah. um, for a little while. But you just want a quite oh, a nice, wow, just... just quite a nice speed. And you can just oh, start oh, drawing oh. whatever you fancy. Um, don't be too scared. So it is literally like, as it says, it's free, freedom, freedom yeah. embroidery. You're... So you can move the hoop in any direction. Um, what you don't want to do is have them, if you have the machine running um, not fast enough and move the hoop, 
like you've got uh, huge stitches yeah. and you're most likely to break a needle because <coughs> okay, so you're you trying to... to force the fabric over before yeah. the needle's down and you're most likely to step and, um, break a needle. It's not like quilting where we want all those stitches perfect. Well, when yeah. we're quilt free motion quilting, we want quite decent sized stitches and we want them all the same size. Don't think about that with free motion embroidery. You are physically just tiny little stitches and you're drawing yeah. and making. You kind of just freedom out, yeah. free, off you go. <laughs> and so you just, uh, yeah, just having a doodle really and just, just wow. have fun with it. So That looks nice. Would you like to have a go? <gasps> oh. <laughs> Really? You don't have to. Well, have I'll have a go, go <laughs> but I don't know what will happen. <laughs> oh, my word. You I'm not expecting that. No, I've not used that the sewing <laughs> machine for years. So Just what hold do I the do? loop. <gasps> That's it. Quite fast with the foot pedal. There you go. Oh, my word. Is this right? Yeah. Oh, I'm freedom embroidering. That's it. But, but, yeah, excellent. <laughs> A good speed. Hannah, don't tell me to do anything, I'm concentrating. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. See, no fear. <laughs> wow, brilliant. <laughs> um, hey, I made a picture. That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> Work of art. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing then uh, that I like to use is a zigzag. And oh, often right. people forget about zigzag with free motion because they think they can only use straight stitch. Yeah. Oh, so no, um, let me just check what stitch it is on here. I think it's number 11. So we're just oh, so you can just set it. Just set it to zigzag. And it's going to be doing a zigzag stitch, but it won't be, it can't um, determine the stitch length because we've dropped the feed dogs. Right. So we, we're in control of that. So if I move very slowly, we're going to get more of a satin stitch where the zigzag's close together. Okay. If I move quickly, more quickly, it'll be like a normal zigzag. Yeah. But I can go sideways and everything. Wow. All over the place. Oh. So, um, there we have with a zigzag. Oh wow, look at that. But what it's giving you is a oh, much um, stronger line. Yeah. So if you were writing your name or a shape and you wanted it to be quite more powerful, yeah. uh, but you can use it on stems, you know, if you're doing sort of floral things. Ah, uh, you've done this on the grass, haven't you? Is it some grass? Yeah, I was going to say, I'll yeah. refer to some of those. But if you can see, if I'm going sideways, you get this sort of jagged, I like that. Um, so if I try and do a heart shape, it's quite good to sort of see what happens when you just have a play and move yeah. it in different directions wow. and see and see what happens. And the machine that we're using is the 680 as well, which is available. Um, and you're getting the bundle with that as well. You get the free book, you're getting two and a half metres of fabric, you're getting the um, brand new book with that as well. You're getting the free motion starter kit. Uh, you're making a huge saving there, £55.68. So that's going popular already today. We've had a message nice. actually from uh, Alison in Cheshire. Um, oh, I live near Cheshire, Alison. Uh, says, oh, Ange, those pictures look painted. They're absolutely gorgeous. I didn't think anything so beautiful was possible. Aww. She's loving the show. Thanks, oh, Alison. Thank they you. are. That's the, the, what you've done is absolutely incredible. Well, if I can refer um, maybe to some of them. Um, yeah, we can do a close-up oh, oh. now. Oh. We can get a close-up on that. <laughs> um, so um, I'll come on to a book that we've got actually by Alison Holt and many people will know her work. Alison works purely in just stitch and so you can imagine oh, yeah. how long it takes to build up. Gosh, yeah. Um, um, I tend to work in, I like different layers, so some of this is purely stitch, uh, but other parts are, this is kind of upholstery I fabric. I like that. Uh, and it's got some free motion embroidery over the top and hand embroidery. I like the texture. Yeah, it's of a lovely both. texture. And, and here I've just put down little scraps of fabric. So this is where you're going to become obsessive about keeping all your off cuts. Oh, yes. <laughs> from, your, from your patchwork and your other projects. Um, that's incredible. My, the sky here is, is some dyed fabric of mine. So I've dyed that with some Procyon dyes. Oh, wow. Um, and the rest is, like you say, little scraps of fabric and then just a bit of free machine embroidery over them. So you can sort of, you know, layer up yeah. different techniques and applique. That's lovely. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I'll come on to some of the yeah, others. I'll that's that your back. work there. Yeah. This book that we've got here, the Alison uh, Holt book. Mm. Uh, great for inspiration again, isn't it? For that kind of thing. It's got a lot of landscape in there. 
She also um, uses a zigzag quite a lot. Does she? Right. And um, I was just coming on to, I, this is something I use when people are getting into free motion embroidery. Just try making some different patterns and different shapes. You can see here, this is kind of like grass-like. Yeah. Um, this is some ideas of when you start to play around with zigzag. But Alison right. does the same. Um, and what's beautiful in here, I mean, she talks you through her way of creating um, her landscapes and her flowers. Um, but I think you can see here um, the, a similar thing, really, where she sketched with mark making, really. That's oh, how you yeah. need to think about it. Think about your mark making with stitch. And, it, and so she's drawn little sketches oh, and shown gone. how you transfer them to stitching. Oh. And then again, using the zigzag. Um, you can use a zigzag and play around to, to make the different types of flowers that Alison uses. She paints backgrounds yeah. as well. Gosh, Here we can see how the zigzag is. Different way of doing used. it, isn't it? Yeah. It's incredible. So that's um, that's lovely. You know, if you want to do yeah. sort of um, woodland, is it woodland and landscape? Yeah, it's pictures? all wood. Yeah, flowers, landscapes. But I think people get a little bit sort of they they get to this point where they're just doodling with stitch and yes. they think. What can I do? What can I do? So I think it's really nice to use it with a plique like we've yeah. done here because it gives you that impact. Not everyone wants to sit and colour in with stitch. No. Um, you know, um, so so to get the impact more quickly with a little bit of um, a plique. So what I've done here is I've um, got one of these actually because I've done some of my leaves with a plique. So I've taken this design from the book. This is from this book. Yeah. yeah. And I've enlarged it a little bit. So if I take this out. Really popular, this. And you know we're halfway through already. I know, yes. It's um, crazy. <laughs> Over half the stock has gone from this book, the uh, brand new book today, Free Motion Block Designs. And this is what Angie's used for some of her plique designs as well, that you can see these four gorgeous designs here. This is what Angie's um, taken from the book. What I'm going to say as well, if you have a scissor, function on your machine don't use it with free motion because you want a long tail right. to bring up through your fabric if you use the scissors it's very short and you yeah. won't get it um, to come up so, so you I've, don't want to use the don't scissor use it no. yet on when you're doing free motion so I've enlarged one of the designs did you um, just trace that yeah, yeah I just um oh, actually copied it, enlarged I, it yeah I, yeah I did it on the photocopy oh, I just that's put it up about 140 yeah. percent um, and also, uh, I know we've probably covered bond web and how to do a plique, but if you've got, so part of the design here is just the leaf. So I've traced the leaf onto my bond web yeah. and then applied it to, with heat to the back yeah. of the fabric. We cut it out roughly before we apply it and only cut it out sharply after it's already on there. Yeah. You know, you don't cut, you don't tr cut it out of the bond web first and then no, put you just it on. Put it on. Yeah, Bond the web's at the nice bottom of the screen crisp. if you need any, uh, which is here, just so you know. There you go. And you can see I've applied it there. What you can do is often with, with uh, when I'm doing sort of these kind of designs, um, you can I've traced over the back here because obviously working in bonder web it reverses everything. Right. Um, so what you want to do is uh, trace it in reverse. Am I in reverse this way? No, I'm in reverse. I did trace it this way. I traced it in reverse for the bond web, but we can position the fabric over the top now. And I'm going to just give me an idea. You can free flow, but if yeah. you want to, this is where we can talk about pens. Um, and this is, there's loads of different fabric markers um, for different purposes. What I want to point out is if you use the water soluble one. Yes. Don't use it when you're doing a plique. Okay. Because the minute you put an iron near it, it sets it permanent. Oh, right, okay. So you okay. won't get it out. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that then. So <laughs> either use a pencil, like we've got the nice mechanical pencils yes, in the bundle. Yes, uh, the bundle, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Or an air erasable pen. Um, these are great for embroidery. Oh, the vanishing fabric markers on the bottom of the screen as well. The only issue with them sometimes with heat is they vanish super quick oh <laughs> before you've even stitched stitched it out they're gone so i'm just loosely tracing this just and it doesn't have to be exact because don't you won't don't force yourself to trace it exact on the machine yeah it's just a, a guideline of where you want the image oh, to lovely. be amelda's messaged in she says um great show uh, fantastic show oh. and there's lots of uh tips and things she's really, and hints she's really enjoying that's it. good lots of messages and stuff oh, yeah, that's lovely so now i can see where i can position my fabric because without that sketch it would have been 
you know, difficult to get it centred in my hoop. Oh, Nicholas says, well done for sewing live, Becky. Yeah, absolutely. She filled a health for health and safety warning with me on that. I did think about it after I thought, <laughs> I've really put you on the spot there. Well, I've not well used one you. since about 1992, <laughs> so it's, uh, I enjoyed it. It's very easy to use. Oh, that's uh, good for you having a go at free motion. I can say I've done it. It's not every day oh. you can say you've done that. <laughs> oh, Claire sent a photo in. Has she got a, a nice... Oh, let's have a look. Has she been dabbling? Oh, Claire sent an example of her free motion she's doing at home. Lovely. Oh, wow, yeah. she's looking forward to some more. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so that's a little caravan applique. Oh, I love it. Fab. Great stuff. Oh, that's great. Kind of puts my that's little it. wiggly line to shame, doesn't it? <laughs> You've got to have to start somewhere. <laughs> yes. I like it. Okay, so I'm going to start um, on the leaf. Oh, the hoop bundle's sold out. Oh, we've sold all the hoops. Busy, busy show today. Yeah. And um, what I'd like to say as well um, with free motion embroidery is um, this thing about sort of, oh, I'm still in zigzag. That's not very clever. Oh, we don't want to zigzag. <laughs> I don't want to zigzag on my leaf right now. That's fine. So I've just done a couple of securing stitches. Then you can cut these off afterwards. Okay, yeah. I'm going to trace around the shape of this leaf, um, but don't be too precious about it being exact. Yeah. Um, you've got to think this is a bit like your handwriting. Yeah. You know, it's and not so it, perfect. it's not perfect. And it can be, it's you, it's, a, yeah. you know, it's characterful. Um, so don't get too stressed and don't forget that you can move the hoop so that you can see a little bit um, I think that's why I like easier. the free motion because I'm a, not so the neatest you, person, I'm a yeah. free spirit. I can, uh, and a little tip when you're doing um, applique is to actually go around the shape twice. Oh, yeah. So if I go around with a single line, if you've sort of slipped off, actually, I, I actually go off sometimes on purpose off the edge of applique because yeah. I think it looks um, nicer. I think I can yeah. show you here on the rows. It's more, it gives it more energy, you yeah. know? So don't be worried about slipping off the edge of the applique. Yeah. It's bonder webbed down. Um, and go around it two or three times. If you do one line, it looks a bit feeble. Yeah, you want If a you've bit wobbled thicker. a bit, it'll look a bit... Mm. If you go over it a few times, it looks like it's been sketched yeah. with energy. So yeah. um, that's, like another, that's another tip. And also choose a, of a nice contrasting colour. Um, with sewing, we're so used to matching threads, yeah. aren't we? Um, to our fabrics. I can't really see what I'm doing now under there with the lights. We'll talk about the threads um, shortly because we've got quite a few collect yeah. a large collection of threads. And we've got your water out here, haven't we, for your display? Yes, I've a bit. got it. Oh, yes. Down I'm looking there. forward to that one. So, yeah, it doesn't, you've cut that leaf out perfectly. Look at that. But it doesn't have to be, your stitching doesn't have to be exactly no, the right same up to as the, the edges. edges. I'm following it. So, and you can just. Oh, wow, I like that. Put a little bit of uh, detail in. As I said, I would go around that again. Yeah. Um, but I won't, I won't sort of, because I want to get on to so much more today. Yes. So, no, I'm just, just by coming off, we'll do this free wow. um, little bit of ribbon. Can you see the pen disappearing already? Yes. That's crazy, isn't it? I was kind of like, it says it erases, and I didn't want to sort of state the obvious and go, will yeah. it actually really disappear? Very erasable. Yeah. And what you'll find like um, with free motion embroidery different to quilting is a lot of it's in the wrists. So you can okay. actually um, put, your, put your arms down on a table if you've got it in your machine in a, yeah. in a table. Um, you can put your hands out and you're literally moving from the hands. Right. With free motion quilting, it's a much bigger motion yeah. and from the shoulders. So there is a little bit of a difference um, to get used to. Yeah. But you say it's... Uh, don't be scared. Oh, I like it. I could get into this free motion. Sorry. Absolutely. And like you say, it's quite nice to have some of the raw... Um, stitch yeah uh, and then a little bit of applique just gives it a little bit of a pop choose contrasting threads so nice and strong yeah because we're saying um, we don't want a yeah so that's dis one. that's disappearing already and you can see i stitched around this leaf twice it gives it much more energy yeah. than just singular i'll hold that one up so you can see i'll just show you talking about um using i 
So we've just got a couple of examples here. Little little baby, look. <laughs> oh, wow, you can make cards. Oh, let yeah. me hold that. I love that. But I just wanted to show you with the threads <laughs> on oh. here. If you stitch in a quite a neutral thread, um, can you see it's not very strong? And all, and all you see is the shapes that you've cut out of the applique. Yeah. This is a bit stronger thread. I'll hold that one up and for this you. Is, and this is black thread. So that one I'm holding here, this is the first example of a... A little cupcake, but you can yeah. see it's got just cream thread. And when the cameraman just pulled back there, you can see how much powerful this one is. Yeah. So uh, and with these, with the um, the initial one that you have, you only see the cut out shapes of a pleat. Yeah, you, you don't do. really see the the stitching. So um, and this is what you would never think about putting black thread over that lovely no. pink cake, but it it works, you know. Now we've got some Guterman threads and some Orofil threads over here. Do you want me to wander? A little, uh, then now she'll talk about some the threads. So, we've got two packs of these. So, these are our polyester. Yep, so we've got summer, uh, lovely colors, summer loft, yeah, with some and colors. French cottage. <coughs> Excuse me, these are your polyester ones. Is it okay to use polyester thread? That's what the beauty of the embroidery you can use. Absolutely, anything oh, you like. That's what we like. You can use whatever you like. <laughs> so you've got the Glutamine um, Sewell Summer Loft, which is this one, the lighter colours. Nice pastels. There you go. Lovely pastels, aren't they? And then we've got the French Cottage, where they're slightly more bolder, aren't they? Um, oh, those are the French Cottage ones, so they're a lot bolder. Mm -hmm. What you've just been speaking about, isn't it? Good to have a selection. It is. We've also got, oh, we've got Tula Pink's one. These are her Aura Fills. Beautiful, aren't they? They're gorgeous. Look at the box. This is... I know, oh. I hadn't seen the variegated one. Oh, wow. Would variegated be good for this? Variegated is oh, beautiful. Yes, look at them. Drink. Oh, I like that one. Can you imagine if you were doing sort of um, sort of a grass, you know, with the you've got green variegated then, so you're not having to put... Otherwise, yeah. you'd have to put two colours in no, yourself. No, yeah, no, it's great. You 200 yeah. metres of that you get. And these are 100% cotton as well, so it's a personal choice. But I like the two-tail, I like that. You yeah. say instead of put, it's saving you putting double cotton in, yeah. isn't it? really lovely. We've also got someone's asked about the massive big thread pack on the desk. Mm. <laughs> this is, we're limited on that one. Yeah. Did you have it on birthday week? I don't think there's any left. There's not many, no. It's in a presentation. Was this on the birthday week? You get 45. Because thread is so important to free motion embroidery, if you, if you want to look further into it, to doing it, uh, this would be great. Lovely tonal range look of colours. Look at all those colours. Oh, I like those bright pinks, the metallics. You can use it for your piecing and your quilting as well. There we go. So we've got a nice selection there for you to, a collection for you to choose from. Now I knew I'd be chasing time in this hour. Yes. So um, I just want to talk about, um, just quickly, if you don't put your, like I said before, if you don't put your work in a hoop, you can use stitch and tear. Yeah. Purely on the back. Right. Um, and what you can also do, if you don't want to trace the design onto the fabric, I've got that many bits of paper. Um, with stitch and tear, you can actually trace the design onto the stitch and tear instead. Okay, so then you'd have your layer of fabric, your pink layer on the top, you put yep. your stitch and tear on the back, and then you could literally stitch that in reverse. Oh yeah. So you wouldn't use bobbin fill in that instance because you'd want your green you'd on want, the yeah. bottom. Um, so I could put that on, trace around that, Come to the top and then cut away. Yeah. With the, if you've got the duck bill oh, scissors, the, duck bill the scissors, uh, yeah. applique scissors are handy for that. And that's how I did that one. So that's not fused down with bondo web at all. It's just loose. I've put the little green spot on afterwards. But there's another way of transferring your patterns. You can work in reverse. Yes. Yeah. Don't you know? Don't forget that. I was going to stitch that out today, but because I want to show the soluble. Oh, I know. Yes, we'll want to get on to time. See this one. Um, soluble, yes. I've been working with soluble for so many years that I've tried, I think, every type of soluble out there. 
And I started off with uh, films. So there's lots of different ones on the market. This is what we'd call a soluble film. Yeah. And you can see it's film, it's see-through. Um, and, and they each have their purpose, because I now use both. Okay. But this is soluble fleece, violin soluble fleece. fleece. If you've never come across it, this is also soluble, but it's more like... Um, a normal stabilizing fabric yeah but it's brilliant for free motion embroidery so um, what it does it takes a whole lot more uh, needle punching so when we're doing something very heavily needle punched yeah. with embroidery the plastic tends to break down oh, it and breaks split. down so that's where this yeah. one so this one really comes into its own it's really so this stable. is a solid fleece and i'll just get some examples for you there we go you get a meter of that Meter square. There we go. So. And then you've got your water soluble as well, which comes like this. That's it, yeah. That's the film. The film. Yeah. So they each have their own sort of. And you also get both in your machine bundle and your starter bundle as well. So this is your starter bundle. There, where you've got your stitch and tear in it, you've got your pen. Yep, so your pencil with the lead, and that bundle is uh, free with the machine as well, or it's twenty eight ninety nine. It's a great kit there. There we go. Okay. This is what fascinated me <laughs> <laughs> this morning. So um, free machine embroidered poppies I've been making for a few years now, and um, this is yeah, purely. Amazing. Look at that. This is all just thread. <gasps> so it's just like thread. making your own lace, but on the machine. Wow. Um, and this is done by stitching into a soluble stabiliser and then the stabiliser goes away and leaves you purely wow. with just some thread. Um, so how you would do this is, um, I use the solu fleece nowadays because it's much more stable as I said. Yep. I need um, a pen, like a felt tip of some kind. It can be any type of, this isn't a fabric um, pen, this is just a, uh, you know, to use on paper, a sharpie or something like that. So this is just I'm solid fleece. I'm going to go through. I'm going to put some paper in case that goes through yeah. to the desk. <laughs> Leave your mark. I'm just going to do, you know, you can draw whatever design you're wanting to do. Just give yourself a bit of an outline yeah. to follow. Um, do be aware, I've done this sometimes. When if I've been doing sort of the dandelion, this is okay. all done with um, soluble as oh, well. Yeah. Um, if you do a coloured pen, the ink can sometimes go into the white thread. Right. So be careful, be careful of that. that yeah, colour. you don't want to do that. I'm going to show you a little bit of how you'd start off. And then I have, because it takes quite a long time, as you can imagine, to build something like that yes. up. I have one prepared. So exactly the same process, the way I've got the stabiliser in the hoop. So just the solute fleece there yeah. in the hoop. Exactly the same process to bring my thread up. Actually, I should have put the green bobbin in the, in the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't. So... Uh, <coughs> Obviously, when you're working with the soluble, yeah. you want your colours. You're going to see both sides, aren't yeah. you? So, but I won't waste time changing it for now. What I want to point out here is that you just trace your outline of whatever shape you're creating. If you think it's quite a lot that you've got to fill in, um, so it's a really good idea, then you can switch to zigzag. To zigzag, yeah. Oh, if, if, well, if we do um, kind of like a skeleton, if you do a skeleton initially in um, straight line. So you can put yourself sort of a base skeleton okay. down. Okay. If you can imagine, this is, you know, it's not, it's not a quick process. No, this. no. So you, you're there. Not when you've got 15 minutes left. Either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but what I want to point out is that you have to have joined all these threads because if you've just got a line of thread like we have there and we dissolve the fabric, yes. it's just going to come, come away, apart. It? Yeah. It's, nothing's going to actually attach. You know, it needs to be attached. So I've just switched to zigzag. You can quite easily join... You can use zigzag in, in these... Um, it actually... In these designs it actually gives like a different texture yeah um, it really worked on the poppy on the poppy leaves to give that texture so what I'm doing I'm just going backwards and forwards now with a zigzag in the same manner and what you want to do is just make sure that you capture each of the threads you don't have to fill it completely because then it's a bit pointless yeah you know you won't be able to see, see it's kind of a lace if I just do half of it 
going to go back now to straight stitch because um, you can just meander over then those zigzags then making sure you capture each and every one of them. If I take it out from underneath the machine quickly just so I can point out. Yep. If I put it on a white background you'll be able to see. Um, so if I dissolve the fabric away, these straight lines are just going to be floating in <coughs> there. You know, they're, they're not going to be attached to anything. No, so that... All of these zigzags, can you see, I've actually, they're kind of linked to yeah, each they other. Are, they? Um, so that's what you're looking at doing. And if you keep going over, you'll get some like the poppy that build up into lovely sort of deeper rivets yeah. and, and some of it's more open. It's okay to have a few threads that are like that because yeah, it's, it, it gives it some yeah. character, you know. Um, so I've, what I've done is I've done, I've stitched a little, because I know how time consuming it is. Yes. I've stitched just wow, a, little look down, at that. a little daffodil. Wow, What it's, you made uh, earlier. <laughs> so this is just a, a yet mainly, mainly yellow thread with a little bit of orange. Um, and I've just stitched, stitched that pattern down. And we're going to pop this into some water. Oh, we're going to do that. Yeah, this is what I've been it. excited about it. now. Are we allowed? Water on set, dangerous. So all we've stitched on there is your thread on your solid fleece. Yep. And what I'd suggest here now is cut away just to within a few millimetres. Okay. Um, because all this is going to do is turn to like a gunk in the water. So um, you don't have to put it down your sink, do you know what I mean? Cut it away. Just normal water. We've not put just any chemicals no, or anything no. like that. It's just normal water. And you can keep these um, bits as well. I should come on to point out as well, because you'd notice I was using six, the six inch hoop. Yes. As well, because what you don't, because you cut all that away. Yes. You, you don't, don't want, want to, to put a big hoop and then stitch a little flower no, in the middle because no, no. you're wasting, wasting all your solid yeah. fleece. So the six inch one's really good for doing these little projects. Yes. And literally now, if I just uh, drop that in, you oh. can see. Um, actually, it's freezing cold. This water. <laughs> it's better with lukewarm, lukewarm water. Lukewarm. I will say. Ah. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Actually. It's Freezing. Oh dear. <laughs> so you can manipulate it. So we need it. lukewarm, really. Yeah. They all say cold water soluble, but they don't. Uh, they take a while to go in. Uh, yeah. In. Uh, but you can. Do you want me to have a go with that? It's manipulating, and you. It is. Oh, it's, it's breaking. There you go. It's, it's breaking it's away. It's starting isn't it? to break away, but that would have gone so quickly the minute you dropped it in. Yeah. Um, you can see it's coming away and just leaving you with. Um, your beautiful stitching. Wow. Now, if you've used a film, like the clear film, you can literally um, not manipulate it all away. If you leave a bit of film in, it'll give it that little bit of rigidness. Yes. Do you remember yeah. when people used to do, um, put things <coughs> in sugar soap? Oh, or, or they used to, not that. sugar yes. soap. They used to sugar sort of lace making yeah. to make it stiff. Uh, but with the solute fleece, because it dries white, do, do manipulate do that, it between yeah. your fingers and get rid of it all. Um, you can see I'm just sort of doing that between my fingers and thumb. But you can see how delicate it is. I've got a towel there somewhere. Let me you get a towel. Up with and we'll just pop it on a towel. You can actually put these back together with a little bit of water. And, um, oh, can you? Yeah, because yeah. if you put a bit of water, it will join. So <laughs> pop that on there yeah. for you. So have you finished with yeah, this? Yeah, that should be I'll fine. Pop that back out of the way. Ooh. I know it's, it's Don't a bit want to wobbly. Tip it everywhere. <laughs> it's like an unset trifle. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <gasps> Look at you that. You can see how delicate. Wow. Um, you know things that you can make. That's um, incredible. What handy tip for this kind of work is to just go down your local swimming baths. Pound shop. <laughs> Pound shop. Oh, it looks like a swimming float. <laughs> it's a Neely pad. Garden Neely pad. Oh, <laughs> taking it from the swimming. You might already have one, but these are great for pinning out then your um, your designs. Oh, nice. So you can just pin it. Um, I've got some pins somewhere. What I've also done sometimes is, um, well, I, I've got. Can't find my pins. Where's oh, you? there they are. Couple I've, of minutes left with you, Anne. Oh, I've got some. Um, you know the polystyrene balls oh yes and the poppies I actually dry over a curved surface ah so right. I dry them face down the petals so they get a bit of a so they get a bit of a, a curvature yeah. on them but yeah so then you can just use your these are great for pinning and you're going to have to come back because we're going to run, <laughs> out, of run time. out of time and again I'm very interested can I have Angie for the whole four <laughs> hours next time please <laughs> 
And if your if your design is you know very open and it's gone a bit out of shape, obviously when you dissolve it, just pin it. Out. Yeah, to how and it will yeah, go. Pin it out want and it. it will set in that shape then, and um, you can see. Wow, anyway, that quite is quite amazing. Sweet. But if we do run out of time, I'm just going to talk a little bit then about the way I use the film. Yes. So We've got um, a minute. A minute. Um, film. <laughs> <laughs> the film I use a layer of solute fleece and then a layer of film, which I forgot I've lost it. And that you can put chopped up bits of fabric yeah. between those two layers. And the film's great because you can see through it. You can see okay. what you're stitching. So and that's how I made the Budlier petals. They're actually made as complete petals and then apply it with little chopped up bits of silk. Okay. And then apply it to the background. It's really lovely if you want to get that depth that you can see through things. Yes. Um, so the, the, the two together work in that way where wow. you put a layer of things in there, put that over the top, do a little bit of free machine embroidery on it, dissolve it all the way. All the way. And yeah. there you go. Wow. So I hope that's given everyone some insight anyway. Yeah, to, um, we'll have to explore there's that There's so next much. Time. I know when they said about doing an hour on free machine embroidery, I was like, where do I we start? We need more. We need, <laughs> we need more. Oh, Andrew, do you know what? It's been so interesting. We've had so many lovely messages have oh, come in. Too many, we can't even read them out. Um, I've learned so much as well. Thank you so oh, much. You're welcome. It's and I hope brilliant. it's inspired I'm... people to have a go. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, do you know what? If I can have a go live on air. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Miss Crazy Hands, <laughs> then um, everybody can as well. So thank you so much, Angie. Welcome. Are we going back over here? I'm going to take a little walk over here. I can't believe today's nearly over. Um, so I'm just going to round up with our machine bundle that you're getting. So it's incredible. There's less than five of these machines left now. Um, £999. So it's the um, 680. So you're getting your starter kit in there with those stabilizers that we've just uh, seen Angie using. You've got the brand new book in there and you've also got the pen that's going there as well. Um, so you've got all that going in there and some fabric as well. You've got a massive, oh, I was just going to run and grab the book. Uh, massive save in there. The machine comes with the uh, motion book. Shall I just, I'm just going to do this. Uh, there we go. Uh, it's like crazy at the end of the day. Like tick tock, tick tock. Um, here's the book. So this comes with everything that you need in there. It's got some great designs in the middle there. Brand new book, so it's got great designs for quilting and also for free for the embroidery as well. So, as I say, the machine bundle as a whole, there are three people with it in their baskets, now four people with it in their baskets. So when everybody checks out, there will be no, they will be gone. So today's allocation for this bundle, it will be sold out. So if you have got one in your basket, I don't like to be like quick, 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 but the, everyone's, if everyone in their basket's got one and they check out, they will go, they will be gone. Um, so please do check out your basket on that. The 680 has everything that you need in there. Um, you've got all your features in there. You've got your feet with it. Um, I, as I say, it's I've, first time I've seen it, so I think it's incredible. It's got loads of people talking about it before in the office and things. So it is a fantastic sewing machine. Um, just be aware, more people have got it in baskets now than there is of it available. So make sure you do check out your basket if you want it. Get so many free things with it as well, which is great. Now, we've got the new book as well. Um, again, this is going, lots of the stuff we've had today has been flying out. So this is the brand new book. If you can get this as well, the block designs, free motion. Um, as I say, it's great for quilting and for the, um, we used it for some of the appliques today as well. So we've got that over half the stock. So this is tomorrow's menu. So this is what we've got coming up tomorrow with Vicky tomorrow. Uh, oh. So we've got the House of Alistair at 8 a.m. Then there's the sewing tool station at 9 a.m. Um, we've got EPP with Alistair at 10 and Miss It Miss Out at 11 a.m. So that's all coming up tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, if you've got that machine bundle in your basket, please check it out. I'm back here Saturday the 3rd of March. Have a lovely day. Uh, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Follow us on Twitter for more inspiration, top tips, news, and share your own creations with us. Tune in on Friday 23rd of February for an hour of Sashko Stitching with Jennifer Taylor. Originally a traditional Japanese technique for mending clothes, Sashko uses simple running stitch to create fascinating, intricate patterns. 
We have everything you need in this hour, from the complete Sashko starter kit to books, templates and accessories will have you stitching in no time. As well as teaching us the technique, Jennifer will be showing us how to apply it to a sewing room storage set. So join us and learn something new on Friday the 23rd of February at 8am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678.